All right, I think we are uh, live. So that's what the button says. It does say that. <laughs> look at the button. Now we do that split second wait thing where I make sure that it's actually playing. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to our second year of doing the Masters KOW uh, first round matchup cast. We have a star studded cast with us tonight. Actually, most of the people here are like West Coast and then Jake. And then there's uh, <laughs> West Coast and West Coast. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll let everybody introduce themselves, and then um, we'll kind of work our way through that, and then we'll go through what the process will be at the end of that, and then we'll actually get into the first round matchups of Table One through Sixteen of the U.S. Masters that are going to be held in <laughs> Chicago next week. Uh, this is the uh, second year we've done this. This will be the collective tournament that we have where eight different regions from the United States selects their eight best players and those players duke it out to see who will be the U.S. master. So let's just start at the bottom. Jeff Swan, why don't we start with you? Kick it off. Tell us who you are, what you're from, what you do. Gonna start with me. You. All right. Yep. Uh, you play Kings of War in the U.S. You probably know who I am, but I'm Jeff Swan. I'm on a podcast with with Mark uh, and uh, Ryan Smith, the beer phase, that's what you're watching right now is beer phase stuff. Um, originally from West Coast, uh, from Orange County, live in Fort Worth, Texas now for the past six years. Uh, obviously came from that other game and am now dominating in Kings of War. No, just just kidding. <laughs> just with Trident Realms. Um, but uh, yeah, move over to... Uh, I'm gonna throw it to another West Coast guy. Let's go. Let's go, Rashad. What up, guys? I'm Rashad. Uh, fairly new to the scene. Uh, been into Kings of War for about two years. I'm from the West Coast. I'm not on any podcast, <laughs> but I'm uh, but I'm often on Counter Charge on Friday nights. Um, I play Undead. Uh, I love tactics. I love lists, and I'm really excited to be on this podcast tonight. Awesome. Let's uh, let's kick it over to Ryan. Let's keep West Coast going. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I'm the chair for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I'm not cool, so I'm not on any podcasts, but uh, <laughs> we've been playing up here. I came from uh, th that other game too, so I'm just excited we have a full team this year. So Yeah, it's team man. We are too. Yeah, sweet. Uh, Jeremy, close us out with West Coast. Okay, I'm Jeremy. I am the chair for West Coast, and I am on a podcast. Shameless plug, <laughs> Counter Charge. You may also <laughs> know me from the List Builder Studio. Which is my segment on counter charge. It's backwards. And, uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Put it in the mirror and then get to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a bunch of other swag here, so I'll just like throughout the episode, I'm just going to change swag. So this ah, is okay. Beginning We're get to see naked so, pics here in a little bit. Um, All right, it will be like after well, dark. Exactly. <laughs> and as uh, some of you may know, I have your rubber band uh, host for counter charge after dark, which is our Friday night uh, painting thing. So you should come check it out if you haven't. Um, Resident uh, butthole liquor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we, we look <laughs> butt hairs. We uh, talk about rubber band density, um, all sorts of stuff. So it's a, a plethora of things to explore. All right. All right. Mr. Hutton, you're up. All right, so I am representing, I guess, everything west, uh, I mean, east of, like, <laughs> the country. Um, my name is Jake Hutton. I'm the rep for the Mid-Atlantic. Um, I also am a Warhammer refugee. Uh, I'm super excited for Masters this year. I am one of the co-hosts for the Unplugged Radio podcast, um, which is awesome. I love After Dark. I try to get on there whenever I can, and uh, I'm excited to get the show rolling. I do, too, lick uh, weasel hairs, you know. Gotta do it. Yep. The power of the salmon <laughs> pants. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it, it is not a, a live broadcast without me getting drunk at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and start it off. I am drinking a Thornbridge Tart Sour Ale that came all the way from Dan King from the UK. Drinking mm -hmm. it out of my hot fusion glass. Uh, fucking asshole. Aha, suck it. <laughs> Anybody else want to kick in a drink? While well, I guess I'll just go ahead and show that I'm also drinking out of the same hop fusion glass because you you're got the fed up. Yep. Yeah. Fed up. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, I I kept it classy with a American classic Yingling Lager. Dick. 
So and, uh, I, I am drinking from a blood in the sun glass. Oh, which snap. is actually the location of yes, the masters. It is. Um, I'm drinking a finely aged Arizona green tea, fresh from the shell. Um, <laughs> nice. Slightly chilled, you know, just for the taste. Nice. Well, I am drinking out of a San Francisco Giants 2016 spring training cup. And in preparation for Masters and later for my long-term liver endurance training for Lone Wolf, I'm drinking <laughs> from the vodka capital of the world, Modesto, California, American vodka distilled six times. Dude, that Kirkland vodka, that is, you know, that's like literally the same thing as Grey Goose, right? It's like the same person yeah. made that, the same distiller. Yeah, see? So I'm getting to make America great again. So. America. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else drinks to kick in? <laughs> Rashad drinking his non-alcoholic beer oh, tonight. Yeah. I'm drinking my non-alcoholic Corbell, uh, Mr. Fancy <laughs> Pants. Uh, Do they think non-alcoholic Corbell? I'm drinking non-alcoholic Corbell. I think I'm drinking it age long enough that the alcohol falls out. Do they really? Wow. And I'm drinking it out of a tumbler with ice, which is uh, quite fancy. Ooh, that's oh, class. man, that is that's class, class right there. Fuck. Jeez. With a pinky up. Wow. Well, All right, I'm Ryan. Drinking at six in the evening. I'm drinking water. Oh. Well, yeah, no, we had to have uh, somebody. I'll be having a beer over. later, though. Okay, someone right. had to be drinking Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we we've done the intros and and the real intro. Um, how this breaks down is what we're going to do is we're going to read through each table, table one through sixteen. We're going to tell you which two competitors are playing on that table. We're going to read through their entirety of their lists. And then we're going to spend anywhere from the neighborhood of like five to 10 minutes collectively talking about the strengths or weaknesses of the list or how we think those two players will interact. And ultimately, we're going to try and pick who we think might be the winner in that case. Obviously, we don't know what the scenarios are going to be. I typically just go off of kill. And then if I see something weird, I'll throw in a caveat like, oh, I think this with this scenario. Um, in other versions of these, we do a lot more tactics talk. Since this is Masters, we don't really want to give anybody's tricks away, so we're not going to talk as much about tactics, a little bit right. here and there, but we're not going to be like, oh, if I had this list against that list, this is exactly what I would right. do. We're not yeah. going to do that. Stick um, to it being about the lists versus each other and not giving everybody, this is how to beat it. <laughs> so. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with table one. Uh, table one, we have John Vaness versus Sean Williams. Uh, that is a northeast southeast matchup, and Rashad, you are leading us off with John's list. So let's hear it. Let's also right. note, sorry, sorry. Uh, let's also note if you guys haven't watched these before, this is not like oh yeah, don't take your shit feelings, seriously. don't take it serious. <laughs> you suck. We're only, we're only about seventy five percent accurate with these, so I don't remember the shit that I say on these. Yeah. So if I make a pick. <laughs> And you come up to me later and you're like, ha, you were wrong. I won't know what the Probably fuck. Probably not going to remember it. There's a couple that we'll remember, obviously, but don't don't get all upset if we say you're going to lose because you probably will. But just, all right, just, go ahead. Just put it on your billboard. Go win. That's yeah. There you go. All right, Kick. guys. So uh, John Monace is rocking the Bissels, and he's starting off with three regiments of flame bears, one of which has the jar of four winds, and the other one has fire oil. Then he has two troops of gargoyles, naked, a horde of lower abyssals, and he has exchanged the shields for two-hand weapons, and he's also given them brew of strength, so they're crushing two. He has two regiments of tortured souls, naked, one a free with the inspiring talisman, the well of souls, one archfiend of the abyss with wings, lightning bolt, and the blade of slashing, and then another archfiend, archfiend of the abyss with wings, lightning bolt, and this one has the blessing of the gods. Total of 12 drops and 18 unit strength. Nice. All right, Ryan, you have Sean's list. Let's hear it. A second. Sh Sean Williams? Yes, yeah. sir. Awesome. He's playing Rordia. I think he's the only one playing Rordia, so good for him. He has an allied contingent of goblins of two regiments of spitters, a war trombone, and a big rocks thrower. And then he has a ton of halfling archers. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five regiments and three hordes. 
He has a volley gun, three of the howitzers, a wizard on a cab with alchemist cursed, and another wizard on cab with alchemist cursed, a wizard on a winged arrowless with circlet of the blood, and then he has a uh, halfling master sergeant with a bow uh, that's mounted and has the piercing arrow, and then he has one, three halfling sorcerers all mounted with alchemist curse. So, Just a side note that made Jeremy uh, pour himself another drink. I got drink more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, let's kick it off. Who has thoughts? Well, I think I know both these guys played. I guess I haven't played John, but I play Abyssal, so I guess I'll start. Um, so number one, John Vanoss, good player, uh, one one of the one of the better players up in there in the Northeast, pretty consistently good player. Don't really care for his list. Um, I think that investing in two Archfiends and a Well of Souls and then having any Freed in there on top of it, like it's a whole lot of points and characters. And being someone who runs an Archfiend and Well of Souls, like I know how quickly those points add up and how quickly you can lose uh, scoring units there. Sean is a, Sean's one of the best, if not the best Southeast player in that region. Very, uh, very solid player. And dude, like this list is just spam shooting. This is not what John wants to be seeing across from him. It's so much shooting. And if, unless he plays completely in cover, I, Honestly, I, John's a good player, but it's going to come down to scenario, and I re he's going to be coming off a back foot for sure. So I, for me, give me Sean. Okay. I'll chime in. Um, don't even want to say much. Fully agree with Jeff. Uh, Sean doesn't want to uh, – I mean, uh, John doesn't want to see this list. Um, does does he, anybody intentionally want to see this list? Nobody wants to see the film. Nobody wants to see it. All he has is so so, nope. so it's it's low defense uh, and low drops and kind of kind of like an elite list versus something that just doesn't care about uh, you know something like, like an wants arch. to see elite stuff to blow right. away. Exactly. Yeah. It's basically a, it's a really good matchup for Sean, I think. So I would give it to uh, Sean as well in this one. Yeah, you know, I think uh, both Jeff and Rashad are, are pretty right on here. I mean, um, Sean's list is just like, there's not enough turns in the game for him to to kill that many units. Even if he's flying around, you know, and getting uh, so the combats that he, that he wants to get, I just think with that many shots, you know, um, it could go downhill real fast for him. And I know that John is a great player and, uh, I just think that he's okay. That, he's oh, okay. No. Yeah, it's just it's too much. It's, it's just tapping the brakes. <laughs> it's too much filth. You know, you lose a couple units. You know, early on to that much shooting, and then you know, not to say that you know anything can happen, right? Um, he plays train. You know, whatever he wants to do, but it's going to be tough. He's going to be uh, uh, going uphill. I think. Gotcha. Yeah, same thing here. It's just too much shooting. I mean, it's over a hundred shots. Just with the bows, then yep. you add in the war machines plus the alchemist curse, which kind of counters the elite units, the high defense units. So yeah, I mean, like Jeremy said, anything can happen, but I, I, my money would be on Sean's list. I don't know, I don't know either player though. So, Jake. Yeah. Um. So I know John pretty well. He's actually one of the co-hosts on my podcast, uh, and I've known him for like, Jesus, I think seven years now. And we've been playing. Um. This is definitely not the style list he wants to see. Um, I think potentially his flame bearers could do okay against some of this stuff, but the problem is all the halflings have stealthy, right? Yeah. And I mean, you've got so much shooting, so he can't commit his archfiends to anything because nothing's worth committing them to. So this is a really tough <laughs> matchup for John. Uh, I've got to go with Sean, even though I hope John wins because I don't like seeing lists like Sean's. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Understandable. All right, so it uh, <laughs> looks like we've got a landslide victory for our first table out of the gate. Uh, let's jump Prove over us to... wrong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or at least get a draw. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, table two, let's jump over. We've got Chris Fisher out of the West Coast versus Stephen Firth out of yep. the South. 
Jeff, you've got All Chris. right. Yeah, we got uh, titled version 1.5 from Chris Fisher. I really think he's planning on taking 1.5 points on this one, maybe? I don't know. Uh, so he is playing, uh, it appears to be solid Basilians. Yep. yep. All right, so mono Basilians, like you like to see it. Chris <laughs> has got a sweet list here. One, two, three, four regiments of Paladin Foot Guard, which are just awesome. Uh, four regiments of those. A regiment of Alohi naked. A horde of Alohi with fire oil. Uh, Paladin Knight Regiment naked as well. An abbess on a chariot, which is so good now with the new rules. Um, uh, Blade of Beast Slayer on her, so she's going to tear heads for sure. Um, Bear of the Holy Icon, which is just your BSB. Uh, he's got the Loot of Insatiable Darkness, like everybody likes to do. Uh, we got an Uralohai. He's actually naked. We got a War Wizard who is mounted with Martyr's Prayer. Hmm. And uh, Banner of the Griffin. Okay, I see. Fair enough. Mounted. And then we've got another War Wizard mounted yeah. Martyr's Prayer. And another Wizard mounted Martyr's Prayer. So I think you get the theme there. Followed by, you guessed it, a Phoenix. So a lot of heal. A lot of heal, lots of defense. He is That's facing Stephen Firth from the south. Correct. And he is using Abyssal Dwarves. So we've got a horde of slave orcs with the Brew of Haste, two troops of gargoyles, three hordes of grotesque, one with Potion of the Caterpillar, one with Healing Brew, and one with Dwarven Ale, a half breed champion with the Blade of Slashing, Bracky Barka, the Living Legend, Desusu the Vile, the Living Legend, and then allied in from the herd, we've got. A horde of lichens, a horde of eagles, and a mounted shaman just with Bane Chan. Yep. Alrighty. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Um, so I know Chris pretty well. He's from my, my region, and he plays against Abyssal Dwarves a lot. Um, it's a different list than this particular Abyssal Dwarf list, but I don't think the Abyssal Dwarves are going to catch him out at all. And I think as long as he can figure out what to do about those grotesques, he, he's got it. Um, he, he has so much staying power in his regiments with the heel backing up and then counter-punching. Um, and he's got that flanking speed that can outrange most of this Abyssal Dwarf army. Uh, and I don't see the chaff in the Abyssal Dwarf army quite as much as I'd like with this many grotesques. Two troops of gargoyles aren't going to last. This is going to be a really good table to watch. Mm -hmm. But So my vote's going with Chris. Okay. So I played Steven at Alamo, and he was playing Abyssal Dwarves. And we had a really close game. Now, in that list, he didn't have the herd allies. Um, and I know he's a super methodical uh, uh, tight player, and he's a, a good, solid player. Um, I see what Jake says. Those um, grotesques are so good, but I just feel with with uh, just the drops uh, that Chris has, uh, he you know being able to isolate one or two of those grotesque chords, and then he's in real trouble at that point. I think, and I think these pallet and foot guard regiments are just so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are on clocks, you know, so I'm curious to see, I know that yeah, Steven is such, Steven's biggest problem. you know, and, and he, and he's so methodical and takes so much time and he's laying out his moves. Um, that is something to think about is that he, you know, I don't know if he's been practicing with a clock or whatever, that is something that might start to kind of get in his brain. I know being a slower player myself, you start looking at the clock and then you get stressed, then you take more time and then it becomes like a snowball effect. Um, and I know that Chris also took this to a one-day event with a good amount of people. It did pretty well. I think he either won or placed really high with this he won. list. Yeah. He won. So I know that he is having some success with it. So if he can deal with those grotesque chords and take out those gargoyles uh, pretty quick, I think that he's going to have a, a solid chance to, to get the win in this one. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah I think I'm kind of in agreement. I think the, with all the heal that uh, – Chris has, 
he's gonna have to uh, see he's gonna have to one shot pretty much if he hits something he's gonna have to kill it in one go otherwise it's gonna get healed back to full um and i don't really see that happening because i think chris uh, drops him by quite a bit so he's gonna be able to pick the engagements more so it's gonna be tough does he out drop four 14 six, for seven uh, for chris mm -hmm. close to 12 12 to 14 that's yeah, not a big deal but most of Chris's are individuals you got to remember that too I mean that's a lot of individuals yeah. um sure. so I guess I'll bring in because I see this like the exact opposite way um you you have Steven's got so much chaff in here that Chris can't do anything about he Chris has no range threat other than a Phoenix. He's got which, fast chaff too. He's, uh, yeah, and first has, got. Balls, I mean, he's got a horde of of lichens. He's got a horde of eagles. Three hordes of grotesque. All of those things hit. But don't forget, really he's got hard. He's got fireball thirty two. If you count the phoenix in there as well, right? The phoenix has uh, actually more. He's got ten breath attack from the phoenix, and he's got twenty four breath attack from the three war wizards. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a little bit of chaff killing ability. But those fire, yeah, but like you really said, you gotta be once you get within range, to yeah, work, once you're yeah. ranged, I mean, yeah, I don't, because you're, I mean, your effective range is going to be 12 inches, and I mean, you'll get it off that one turn and then get charged. Uh, that's that's a stretch with how much, uh, all Steven's stuff, like his whole army is slow stuff, is movement seven, and then he's got tens and eights everywhere else. Oh, he's got the six on the orcs, and, but I mean, that's not what he's using. He's using yeah, tier but I mean, everything okay, so look at this. He's got, you got to get through nice. that horde of orcs, which is not easy to do if he wants to chaff with it. Two, two mm -hmm. chaff troops of gargoyles. He's got, you know, the eagles that can be used as chaff. You know, like, so they're good and too. then he's got a lot of really, really, really fast stuff. I, I really think that, um, I like I like Chris a lot, man. I met him last year at Masters, but I I think Steven's got this one in the basket, like like solid enough to where I would say an eighteen. That that's how bad. So Rashad, you were you were going for Chris, right? I didn't want to chime in because I did on the oh, last okay. one. But oh, okay. if you would ask me, I played Chris last week on Universal Battle, and his army is very fast and has a lot of drops. And has a lot of unit strength for being a fast army. Has 14 drops and 18 unit strength, and 28 heal or something like that. If you count the heal and the, I think I, I think Chris has it. Um, but again, I don't know Stephen. He might be really good, uh, but Chris was very uh, surgical in his playing. So I, I think he's he's a very good player. Uh, plus, he's on the West Coast, and I got to. No, no, I got you. I got you. I, got you. I just want to make sure because I, 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 I missed it uh, a little while ago when my wife walked in. Uh, all right. So, are we good on table two? Did everybody get a chance to chime in? Did we hear from Ryan? Yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We did Chris too. <laughs> all right. So we're uh, we're jumping over to table three. We have Alex Chavez versus Garrett Mercier, uh, Mid Atlantic versus Pacific Northwest, and Jeremy, you have Alex's list. Yeah. So I have Alex's list. Um, he is playing dwarves. Of course. Uh, <laughs> He, yeah, the, the you know not quite the dwarf whisperer, but he is uh, the rocks and brocks. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got two troops of uh, rangers, your favorite and mine. Uh, one's got the fire oil, three hordes of earth elementals. One has the healing brew. Two regiments of brock riders. One with caterpillar. One with brew of strength. Both great items for those units. He's got an army standard bearer with uh, loot of Insatiable Darkness. Berserker Lord on a Brock uh, with a Blade of the Beast Slayer. Pretty standard stuff there. A Stone Priest with Bane Chant, Martyr's Prayer, and Fire Am Fireheart Amulet. And then this is, I think, going to be an interesting unit to watch over the weekend. He's got two Steel Behemoths. God, that's a lot of points. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Rashad, you've got Garrett's list. Let's hear it. All right, we got Garrett Mercier from uh, the Pacific Northwest, and he's rocking the Varanger. He's He has a, a regiment of the Mounted Sons of Corgan, naked. That's new. 
He's got Horse Raiders, a troop. Whoa, that's awesome. And then he's got one, two, three regiments. And on the three regiments, he changed the well, he's got the four. throwing weapons for both. Four regiments. Yeah. 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 I'm four, sorry, yeah. yeah, four regiments. Sorry about that. Yeah, he's got four. My, my apologies. No, Difficult. Let me zoom out here a little bit. Um, so he's got four regiments, and he swapped the throwing weapons for bows, losing piercing, but adding range, I guess. Um, then he has a horde of dire fang raiders naked. He's got two devourers, both with uh, gain breath and vicious and ranged attacks. He's got a mages with famulus. Amount and the Scarlet Maw Venulian Amulet. And then he has a Chieftain. He's mounted with the Boots of the Seven Leagues. And he has another Chieftain with also a mount, but no item. So I'm going to go last. <laughs> um, I got to go with my boy Alex on this one. Uh, I think he's probably the best consistent player in coming out of the Mid-Atlantic. Um, he's got a super tough list that has a lot of high defense that I think this Berenger list is going to struggle with. The Horse Raiders are going to be maneuverable, which I think would give many people a hard time, but Alex plays against elves with all sorts of stuff like this all the time, and I think it's not going to bother him. Um, I like this Berenger list. I think it's really different. Um, and if it's played right, I think it stands a chance. But as is, I don't know Garrett. I know Alex. I got to vote for Alex. Gotcha. So I know Garrett. I have actually played his list quite a bit. Um, and what I see in the Dwarf list is any little the, the Brock Riders, I don't think will give him problems because he's got, he'll just focus his shooting there. But the Earth Elementals have poten potential to give him problems, along with the, uh, the Steel Behemoth because he doesn't have the the shooting that has the piercing to deal with it. Um, but uh, I've never seen Garrett lose with his list, so I'm going to go with Garrett. Okay. The Garrett. horse raiders are interesting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. That's the okay. horse raiders are interesting in a sense. I wouldn't run them with uh, bows. I would rather run them with throwing weapons and piercing. They're nimble anyway, so they're going to get to do it either which way. They're just... Right. Yeah, yeah but you're just because the of the piercing, piercing. Is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, losing the piercing, the piercing yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But other than that, it's interesting. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I think it's an interesting take on the Veringer. How many shots is that? Four that's times 14? That's like that's 40 about, something. That's like 40, that's 52, 56 shots plus the seven from the first one. The um, problem is a lot of shots for, for, for uh, oh yeah, for a, uh, for a, uh, yeah. um, for a, uh, Hard hitting, yeah, uh, varying the list. It's actually quite a lot of shooting, but it's not going to do much against Alex, I think. It's going to sort of bounce and, off. Yeah. And Alex is a very skilled player. I haven't played him, but I've always seen him at top tables. Um, so I'm going to give it to Alex as well. I think he's going to he's going to take this. Jeremy. Yeah, you know, I think what Jake said is interesting. This is kind of like a unique list. So anytime I see a unique list or something different, I want to like it because it's different. And I think maybe against something else, all those horse raider regiments, you could do some fun, nimble stuff and move them around and do some shooting. But he's just going to march his earth elementals supported by two steel behemoths, like straight up, the, you know, down the gut, basically. So I just don't see the things in this list on how you're going to deal with that, all that defense six. And um, especially with, I think, uh, Steel Behemoths are totally viable now. They're really good after the buff. You know, in general, I think the Steel Behemoths maybe work a little better in a, in a, to support other dwarf shooting. So I don't know how they're going to work for Alex long term in the tournament. But I think against this list, it's just too much, it's just too much defense six to get through, I think. So I'm going to go with Alex. Yeah, I'll keep mine short and sweet. This might be the most one-sided matchup that we see tonight. I mean... Alex should honestly he should run away with this and if he doesn't something's something's wrong all that defense six I mean Alex could not even put the berserkers on the table I mean because they're that insignificant in this matchup I mean you could use them as a second wave and just clean up stuff but you just can't even even with being nimble even if he just gives you flanks with 
all those attacks into it's his earth gonna elementals, matter. it's not going to matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It, yeah. I mean, you could you could run four of those hor four of those regiments into the flank of the steel behemoth, and that thing's still going to be there. Like, I, I'm, it's just a bad it's just a bad matchup. I think he's going to do really great in the tournament because it is a very unique list. Yeah. When you're a good player with a unique list, it catches people out. Good. Issue is you're not going to catch Alex out. Number one and number two, this is a horrible list for you to match up against. So. I do really like Garrett's list, though. I do, yeah, there's yeah, nothing wrong with no, the list. It's a cool shit I mean, list. It probably beat the crap out of mine. No it's question. Just a bad matchup. For yeah, me. I don't want to. I don't want to fight him. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's like you said. Even if he outplays Alex, which is tough to do when not a good player, and he gets these regiments in the flanks and it's gets automatic. those, you no know, balance. twenty twenty eight attacks hitting on fours with with crushing one. Maybe if he's not TC. a thunder charge one, yeah. TC you know, if he's yeah. not going through. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If he's not going yeah. through nimble or whatever, what are you yeah. going to get? Like just like a couple of wounds, and that's if he's able to outmaneuver Alex, which is tough yeah. in and of itself. You know, I mean, he could dance the whole game. Uh, that's what I do. I probably game. just dance and then try and yeah. score at the end. That's Try to play the scenario. Yeah. yeah. Scenario Sounds will good. come in big for this game. Yeah. 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 That, that Garrett's only hope, yep. I think. Yeah. But I love the creativity. I love the freshness. <clears throat> yeah. It's like really the list. Yeah, it's a nothing really against the guy, list. nothing against the list. Yeah. This is just a yeah. horrible matchup. Bad matchup. I agree. All right. So, speaking of bad matchups, uh, this next punk bitch. Ta table four <laughs> is Benjamin Miller and myself. Uh, we've got Mountain versus South, and I have not opened Benjamin's list until right before I said that, and I'm not, I'm not liking my matchup so far. <laughs> so, uh, who's reading? So I got your list, so. I think Whatever. Ryan has Ryan and Jeff, Ryan. Right? Yeah. Okay. I have Benjamin. Okay. All right. So Benjamin's running goblins. Uh, he has four forces of rebels. He has three regiments of spitters and a horde of spitters. Four regiments of mob beasts. Three trombones. A flagget with a diadem of dragon kind. A whiz with circlet of blood and inspiring talisman. He has magwa and Jews. I think that's how you say that. And uh, two hordes of allied ogres shooters. Too <laughs> lot. A lot of shooting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we should have a rule. <laughs> I, I gotta pour more alcohol here. <laughs> I remember. Pour, I remember pour some for me. Jesus. <laughs> One more shooters in the home uh, being cheese. No. <laughs> no, yeah. Two two hordes of shooters is awesome. <laughs> Uh, I took the wrong allies. I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, uh, read it off. Yeah, it's not that bad. It All could right. be worse. So let's put it like that. Do I need to even pull it up, or can I just do this off of memory? Let's see. I, I think I think you'll miss some of the spells and items off memory, but you'll have the yeah. core of it. All right. So this list looks strangely familiar. I can't imagine why. It's like you saw it uh, six hours ago. Yeah, almost. All right. So uh, Mark is playing rats. I know. Everybody, you ready? <gasps> what? All right. Uh, so he's got a regiment of warriors. That is shocking. Uh, he's got a horde of shock troops, the caterpillar uh, potion. He's got a horde of blight and a regiment of blight. A horde of brutes, brew a haste like you do, double vermintide regiments, three weapons teams with the piercing like they come automatically, three warlocks, uh, one with heal three and shroud of the saint, one with heal three inspiring talisman, and one with bane chant three and veil of shadows. We also have a Swarm Crier for that extra 45 points, followed up with a Demon Spawn with Fly. Um, he's got some allies, which are Shadow Hounds, Troop of Those Guys, and a Regiment of Fiends. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I don't So... <laughs> <laughs> so I uh Mark's fucked. No, no. Yes. <laughs> Look at no. That. Fair, no, fair no. criticism. I think I actually like Mark's odds on this. So Goblin yeah. List I think is a bad matchup for you, but this Goblin List could be much, much worse, especially once we see some of the Southeast list. Um and Dude. I think you have a lot of tools that are gonna be very useful against goblins. 
your allies weirdly like normally i'd be like eh, i'm not super crazy about those but in this matchup those allies are going to be money because this stealthy is such a big that's deal that's right they are like the goblin <laughs> they're so fast and the the fiend regiment is going to tear through most of the stuff in the goblin list i like it i think you're you got if it, it gets there it's got to get there though it's true but with minus one to hit and you know i don't know I, I like your chances, Mark. I think you're a solid player, um, and I don't think there's as much shooting as you think going in. The ogre shooters are scary, but yeah. again, they only can target one or two things and really pin it down. They have fives, so... Right. Yep. Yep, I, I like your odds, Mark. And <clears throat> you've got a lot of stealthy in your list. I mean, you've got two mm -hmm. light yeah. and two... Uh, and castable stealthy from Veil vale of Shadows. Right, so theoretically five stealthy with some lightning bolt yeah. backing up, and then you've got breath if things try to get too tricky. I like your odds, and you've got high nerf. All right, so you going for Mark then? Yep, I'm going for Mark. All right, um, what about you, Rashad? Okay, I was just counting. Um, this is going to be depending on what. How can Mark avoid the the ogre shooters is difficult. I agree with Jake because uh, Mark kind of has the tools to deal with uh, with this list as hard as it is. The shooters are a problem, but he's got it, it really depends on, I think, where can he place what? I think that's what it's going to be. So, uh, yeah, but I, I think in general, Mark, this list is too, it's too rough uh, with all the shooting. Um, I, I'm going to go Benjamin Miller, just I think the list is better. Uh, not that I like it, but I think it's better with two hordes of shooters. Um, but I do think you have a really good chance, Mark. Uh, it's just a, the drops. He has 18. You have 14, I believe. I think he's got 22 if I count it. Right. right, right. He's got 22. Yeah, yeah he's um, got a lot. lot. And you have 18. Yeah. I, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Benjamin Miller on this one. Sorry, Mark. Good choice. No, no worries, man. All right, next. Uh... You know, I, I'm going to go with Mark on this one. I think the stealthy is going to be huge because almost everything is hitting on fives with shooting. It's going to be hitting on sixes. So you might, I mean, that stuff's probably going to get across the board and it can start taking stuff out. So it'll be, I think it'll be close, um, but I'm going to go with Mark on this one because the stealthy, I think, is going to push it in his favor. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Yeah, I think it's gonna be close. Um, I think it's gonna think come right. I think it's gonna come down to a couple things. How does Mark choose to deal with the shooters? I think that unit is tough just because people always forget how good in combat shooters are too. Very and true. the fact that you can't just ping them a damage and they can't shoot at you and they're they're worthless. They are no joke in combat. That's correct. So I think it's gonna come down see, I think if this list, if the goblin list had two hordes of rabble and it had another shooting horde or maybe some some other elements, it would be worse for you. So I think that the the extra rabble actually is probably what you'd like to see in this list. I think it's it's just going to come down to those ogre shooters. Is he if he's is he able to maximize their uh, potential? So I'm going to say I I don't know. I mean I. I'm leaning towards Mark or a draw, but that's if he deals with the shooters well. If those shooters are allowed to, you know, get f f four turns of shooting and then some rounds of combat in, that's going to be really tough, I think. That's true. Um, draw leaning towards, depending on how you deal with the shooters. I think th those units are going to be uh, important in this matchup. Okay. So I'll point out something that I don't think anybody has pointed out yet. So this goblin list has a shit ton of drops and lots of hordes and all this other stuff like that, and ogre shooters are going to be a big deal. Well, you have to have a clear lane, and they hit on fives. And then Mark's got stealth, right? So how many shots is he really going to get off unhindered, no cover, on non-stealth? I mean, dude, his whole army is going to be hitting on six. I mean, let's be realistic. I mean, like, if you hit on fives normally with those shots, getting a, getting a direct line at what you want to shoot at, is not going to be easy to do. Um, it's, even with those ogre shooters, where are you going to put them on the board? I mean, like, you're going to put them behind goblins? Okay, that's cover. And then you're shooting at a stealth unit. The no, six, that's a good point. That is a good you point. You know what I mean? Point. And yeah. then Mark's got a deployable stealth. Like, yeah. I mean, those are really big. 
that's a, that's a big deal when you hit on sixes and then Mark's got speed like a mofo. Yeah. His weapons team shoot just as hard as the trombone shoot. He's got more lightning, a height four lightning caster. Like honestly, Mark has all the tools he needs to do with this. Really, oh, it comes cool. down to the scenario because if it, if it's a scenario that's going to favor putting Mark into a into a, a bucket of I have to be in this area to win, the Goblin player can obviously just. I'm going to wall and yep. make just, I'm just going to give you bodies yeah. and let you kill them. And then, you know, I'm going to attrition you. And that's pretty much what Mark doesn't want to see in, in my opinion. I think Mark has this and has the tools and he should win this one, but it is going to be dependent on the scenario, but I'm going to go with Mark on this one with like a 17 or 16. I, I think the terrain will dictate more than anything. Well, I mean, yeah, it still is me cover even, still. I mean, like, yeah, but I mean, even more than the scenario, because if they're, if the terrain's wrong, I'm, I'm not gonna have a fighter's chance, but if the train's okay or average, I, that's just so. I've got chances. I mean, on top of that, he's got four regiments and mob. I mean, where are you gonna put all these units? And he's gonna, and he's have, gonna layer, dude. I mean, I and, just, ha and have clear line of sights to not shoot on. I'm, and I just don't see it, man. I I would rather see two hordes of boomers over shooters in this in this predicament. I would. I would rather see them able to move. And then pick their shots more precisely. That's that's my opinion. All righty, let's uh, let's jump into table five. Uh, I do have a shout out real quick. Um, we were going to well, I guess we may still have him, but uh, on Sunday we're going to have Adam Ballard, and he was going to be listening into this live, but he unfortunately is unable to because he's having a kid right now. His wife went into labor Ooh, earlier today. So, Great success. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, Samuel James Ballard will come out healthy, fighting and screaming, uh, just like his dad is, because he didn't get to watch this Dirty podcast. <laughs> Dreaming um, of chariot spam. So, Travis Trim, you missed me by, or Travis Tim, you missed me by one table, my good friend. Uh, table five, we have Tom Millard from the Pacific Northwest versus Travis Tim. And I've got of Tom. the mountain region. And Jake has first read. So Tom is using Forces of Basilia. He has a horde of Sisterhood <laughs> infantry with the Brew of Sharpness, a horde of Aloe with the Blessing of the Gods, two regiments of Paladin Knights, one with Push and a Caterpillar, and the other with Wine of Elvenkind, two troops of Panther Lancers, two heavy Arbalists, um, a living legend. Solistice, um, two Erlo Alohi, uh, one War Wizard that's mounted, has Mind Fog, Fireball, and Martyr's Prayer, and then a Phoenix. Oof. I like that it. Someone who took Naeus. I like that. Yeah, I like that dude. I love Naeus, man. Yeah. People are missing the boat on him. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, that's how I saw that first thing. I was like, how do you say that? <laughs> yeah, it's Nath, yeah. yeah. Okay, G silent, duh. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah okay. Nath for 190 points is amazing. Huh? Yeah, he's fucking awesome. All right, so we've got Travis's list. So I have Travis Tim, who is playing in, in honor of Adam Ballard and his newly born son, elves from the mountain region, Dilly Dilly. Okay. <laughs> dilly Dilly! Dilly Dilly. So he has kindred archers with heart-seeking chant, a horde, as you do. Um... He has, I love them. They've been a unit spotlight on Unplugged. I think they're an awesome unit. He has five troops of Silver Breeze Cavalry. Horde of Dracon Riders with Brew of Sharpness. It's not so bad. A War Chariots with wine, a horde of them with wine of Elvenkind. Three Dragon Breaths. An Army Standard Bearer with the Diadem of Dragonkind. Uh, a Dragon Kindred Lord. Hmm. With the brew of haste, and that's his list. So I'll go first, I guess. My first question is: somebody <laughs> knows Travis Tim, right? Somebody knows Travis that's playing this because this is Adam's army, right? Right. Yeah. I yeah. Think okay. So my question great. is: does Travis play against Adam enough to know how to pilot this list? Right. <laughs> Even the Brew of Sharpness, is that Adam too? On the Dragon Riders? Uh, yeah. I think so. 
Yeah, yeah Brew Sharpness. Yeah, Adam, it's, it's Adam not- Travis Tim is playing it. Well, no, it's this is Adam Ballard's list. Travis yeah. Tim is coming to play it because Adam couldn't come. Oh, so he's playing with his list. He, Got you. No, using, I understand what yeah, happened. He's okay. playing the list. My point, that's my question. Uh, my question is, I don't know how that's often Travis, Travis has piloted this list because this is a very finesse list. So that it's going to make a big difference. You, that's exactly. I mean, I'll go first, short and sweet. If he knows how to drive this list, uh, uh, if Travis does, guaranteed – I mean, we're talking possible tabling. I mean, this is this list when piloted correctly is so nasty. So I'm gonna go with Travis. I'm thinking if they're buddies, and usually when you're when you have a buddy, you've played against them a, a fair amount of times, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm thinking if if you see if you've seen this list a few times, then he gets it. You just those Silver Breeze Cavalry are so expensive. You got to get maximum value for them. I mean, War Chariots are great. I thought they were good before. I think they're great now. Um, it's just so much nice hitting on fours, shooting against the the, the infantry. You know, he's he's, he's got a lot of defense three stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, so I'm gonna go with definitely with Travis, uh, thinking that he's probably seen how this list plays. Hmm. I'll, I'll chime in. Uh, this is interesting because. I wonder how the Eloi with the blessing of the gods are going to do against the uh, right. Dragon Riders with the Brew of Sharpness. Yeah. This is an interesting I think they matchup. don't match up at any point during the game. Right. You, you, will yeah. not, you will not do that, right? But when I look at the list not overall, purpose, Travis yeah. has the shooting that Tom doesn't have. Mm-hmm. So they're similar lists, but Travis has kind of a lot of shooting going into a lot of low defense, potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's I, I so I think Travis has a little bit of an edge here. Um, and also love love the Silver Breeze Cavalry with that nimble and, uh, you know, hitting on force. That's awesome. And then so the, the archers are also, you got to put something into those archers with the heart seeking chant. It's so good. So I, I'm going to give it to uh, Travis just because of the amount of shots that he can put into that Basilian list, I think. Yeah, I'll keep mine short and sweet too. I'm on this. I'm pretty much echo that I, I just see the defense three stuff that he's going to pick up with his light shooting yeah but yeah the defense five like aloha and or Aloha's and stuff like that he's just going to let those eventually come in and hit something because if they don't they're just flying around doing nothing and then counter charge him i mean as yeah i mean Travis, if he can pilot this, I think he should. I think I don't know if he's going to say table because it's so hard to table something that flies around as much as Tom's list does. So I would, I would say probably like a sixteen four, honestly. But yeah, I've got to agree. Um, I think if Travis makes a few errors, Tom has the tools to be able to quickly come to combat with Travis and deal with his list. But I'm going to go in assuming that Travis knows how to use the list. And if he does, I think this is a bad matchup for Tom. Yeah, I tend to agree. Tom's Tom's one of my teammates. He's a good player, but uh, all that shooting against the defense three. I don't see the Panther Lancers and the sisterhood hanging around very long. And that no. puts him kind of at a disadvantage. A horde so, of sisters um, with all. Oh, that's gonna be rough. He's gonna lose yeah, that. But so ever, however, like somebody said, if Travis does make a mistake, he absolutely. I, I, all that heal to I back know, it up. I know Tom. I know Tom. I know Tom will be able to take advantage of it. So, I yep. I think depending on how well Travis knows the list will determine this matchup. Just yeah. real quick, it doesn't seem that way, but but Travis has seventy one shots. Hitting on fours with the lead without the dragon breaths and the dragon lords. Yes, right. seventy one shots. Yeah, that's, that's a ton yeah. of shots with with hitting on fours and the lead to put into not very much high defense. Yeah, I think Travis is just going to have to, you know, watch his targets. I think if he knows how to calculate nerve rolls and knows when he can move on to shooting something else, you know, and he's good with how he's spacing out his shooting, it's going to be nasty. You know, getting stuff down. And then he has three dragon breaths, an army standard bear with another ten breath, and then the dragon kindred lord with another fifteen. Yeah, it's a breath. lot. Yeah. So just <laughs> because you made it across the, the board, that doesn't mean now. that you're done. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> dragon has sixteen. The elf dragons have uh, sixteen breath left, no, right? This is an awesome. Put down to ten and cock pack. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. 
this is an awesome list. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, okay, Travis. Did Adam write this list for you while he was waiting on his kid to be born? Because this seems like the type of list he would write. It's, yeah. Adam, it's his it's list. Adam's He's probably taking list. his models. That's <laughs> probably it. Well, we've had Adam before on the List Builder Studio. So if, if you guys were curious and wanted to go back and find an old episode, <laughs> you can go listen to Adam talk about how, his army. How could we oh, we were doing commercials? Uh, yeah, I'm uh-huh. drinking an O'Malley's cream ale. Right <laughs> My all-time favorite cream ale. All right, uh, let's jump over to, you know, honestly, like if you guys look at the next three or four tables, we are stacked with some pretty high-name, uh-huh. high-caliber yeah. players on mm-hmm. – on these guys so this is masters right baby it it's clash of titans uh let's look at table six we've got matt schaefer from the midwest versus robert brandon from the southeast i'm reading matt i'm not yeah good one my nipples are already hard right now i'm reading matt and i think ryan is reading uh yeah correct robert okay yep. uh so matt has a horde of shock troops Naked, another horde of shock troops, also naked. A horde of blight with the brew of strength. Yeah, he does. Four regiments of Vermintide. Wow. A weapons Ooh. team with uh, with piercing, of course. One, two, yeah, two death engines mm-hmm. with vile sorcery. A war chief on a flea bag with a staying stone. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, I just I got a message from Travis. He goes, "Yeah, it's it's all Adam." So, <laughs> theory nice. confirmed. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, continue. <laughs> he's got a warlock with a bench head upgrade, and then he's got a demon spawn with fly, and then he has spirit allies, spirit walkers. Love that. Very nice. It's That's a good red red list. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's different. All right, it's, it's bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So Robert is doing elves. He so has, what region uh, is he from? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and start. Yeah, you're gonna, you're, let's just go ahead and start the start the tally. We've heard it, we're on Reset Southeast the Claire number two. Uh, <laughs> the horde of kindred archers with heart seeking chant. Didn't see that one coming. Wow. Uh, two hordes of dragon riders. One with sharpness. One with caterpillar. Uh, two hordes of war chariot. Oh, no, sorry, three hordes of war chariots. Yep. One with haste. Uh, a mage with Black Iron Crown and Bane Chant 2, three Noble War Chariots, and two Dracon Rider Lords. Ooh, wow. That's pretty nice. See if everybody noticed the theme of Southeast over the next two. He has podcasts. two Dracon Rider Lords. <laughs> it's dra- yeah, they're just Dracons, though. I mean, right. they're don't. Yeah. Eh. Who cares? <laughs> like. They're, they're there to lock shit down the, and then leave. The I mean, Noble War yeah. Chariots are very, very good. So yeah, good. They used to be meh. Now they're good. Yes. All right. So who's got opinions? Uh, let me look at Matt's one more time here. I'm going with Robert Brandon. Um, I don't think Matt has the tools to deal with the shooting. He doesn't have many fast options. Um, he's really relying on his nerve, but Robert has speed and a crazy amount of shots coming his way. And then, if you get close, his Dracon Riders punch you in the face. Um, and I don't see Matt having anything that can shut down the shooting. Like, there's nothing in his list that he can pop forward. The War Chief, maybe. Really? The War Chief, but... That's one thing. Robert has one, two, three, four hordes that shoot. I I, I got to say, I know both these guys. They're both really high caliber players. Mm -hmm. Uh, Robert's obviously got a shit ton of shots, like all of his lists do every time. Um, if If I had to say one way or the other i think matt is a better general if i had to go out that way because matt typically always plays lots of hitty stuff and he's very good on movement um he's he was always a top player in that other game always uh so i see these two death engines those are gonna be pretty big deals and he's gonna deploy them properly 
that they're going to be difficult to take out. They're going their reach is going to be an issue early. Will it though? Fast. Robert has movement nine chariots with twenty four inch range. Right, and how many hordes to get through? <laughs> but I mean, he's not he's not going to charge straight through a shock no, troop but, horde or a blight shoot. horde. The <laughs> the the shoot the tide. I mean, he's going to shoot all he. If he gets to those, if he gets to those death engines by the end of the game or but by turn five, I will range, be shocked. If the death ends are in range, they're getting shot. That's true. In cover, yeah. yeah. But they're deep How are they going to get covered? Yeah. He doesn't have any height <laughs> too anywhere. They're going to be in terrain, bro. You better, no there better be terrain. If there's terrain, I'll give Matt. Anyway, a fighter's yeah. edge. my point is this demon spawn. If he's able to unleash that thing on somebody, plus that war chief is going to get into something, disorder it. Um, I mean, it, Spirit Walker, he's got Spirit Walker Horde with Pathfinder that's going to be up in your junk as fast as possible if you don't shoot them. If you, if you let them live to shoot at Death Engines, then they're going to, then they're going to eat your face. And then, like, the Shock Troops, two hordes of Shock Troops, a Horde of Blight, like, dude, that's, that, that's a lot of bodies, man. I, I will say it's going to be close. And Robert's going to get a lot of damage done. I think Matt has what he needs to get there, especially with being able to give the vermin put the vermin tide in front of stuff and give cover to his butch loggers. I mean, I don't know. I I, I would say Matt in this one. It's going to be tight, no question. They're both great players. It'll be I, a good match to watch. I love seeing four vermin tide. That makes me happy. I just <laughs> well, that's it. Say, I mean, it's mobile it's cover on top awesome. of it, man. Honestly, I mean. Uh, who who else hasn't chimed in for a a, a winner loser? I haven't yet. Uh, I I'm gonna roll with the I'm gonna roll with Matt. I think he's got like I said the the Vermintide for the mobile cover, and he's got I think he has the answers to everything in the Roberts list. Um, it'll I think it'll, it'll it'll be close, so I think it'll come down to just who has the one big turn. I think it'll come down to one big turn that yeah. pivot that uh, that, yeah. that it pivots on, and whoever lands that turn, I think is going to take the game. Uh, but it's I it could go either way, but I'm going to lean towards uh, Matt. Okay. You know, one thing we haven't talked about is that you know the Black Iron Crown. I was just going to say that crown on uh, Elven Mage with Bane Chant. Mm -hmm. Um and I think the Noble War chariots are so good. And I mean, so I liked Stack and Pearson. Is that what you're I thinking? liked Elf. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Elf shooting Horde chariots before, and I think they're even better now. Oh um, yeah, they're amazing. So good. And I know that like uh, Matt's list is super good, and I, I, you know, I know that you, he's a good player. I just think these Elf heavy shooting chariot lists with those uh, Noble. Uh, the nobles on chariots is just so much speed, so much maneuverability. You know, you're basically shooting until you're choosing to charge. Until you're fighting. Yeah. Until you choose, you yeah. choose to do it. It's a lot of pounce. I think it's going to be close, but I feel like these elf, this style elf list, if your target target selection is right on, right on, and you and, and you don't give up anything, I think the the list, these lists are going to be is going to be pretty hard to beat. So I'm going to go with Robert on this one. I think. I agree. I have a when I look at the Elven list, the Kindred Archers with that uh, Elven Mage with the Black Iron Crown. That's deadly. Especially they can they can move back and shoot the. Even if he moves the Death Engines in range, he they can move. I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but that Elven list has so much movement. It can move and shoot, move and shoot, move and shoot. It's gonna come down to scenario cover and those things. But on the on the. On that flip side of that coin, you have um, the noble war chariots are not going to be too great in combat against you know the big horde nerf. Neither are going to be the dracon lords. Uh, this is going to come down to shooting a little bit, but I'm going to give it to the elf, uh, Robert. Brandon, yeah, you, it's funny you mentioned the dracon lords and stuff because I'm just like, man, if he puts those into anything, any of Matt's units any, are going to just eat it. Yeah, they'll just kill them. They'll they just tear them to die. pieces. Yeah, yeah. Even the even the dracon riders. If they get it, even the dragon riders, they if they don't kill something on the charge, they might die. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of things that could just. It's die. just how much of of Matt Matthew, how how much of his army is he gonna have when they get in the combat? That's right. Correct. No, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. 
All right. Uh, are, are we? Is everybody chimed in? I, I think I've got everybody recording. I think we're pretty 50-50 on it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty close. Pretty it's going to be close. Whatever happens, it's going to be a really close game. Yeah. All right. Let's All right. jump over to table seven. We have Aaron uh -huh. Chapman of the South versus George O'Connell of the Mid Atlantic. This is like a this is like a love story. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the battle of the internet personalities. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm up with Aaron's yep. list. I don't think I need to even pull it up. I think you probably do it off the top of my head, but uh, he might change the items. Nope. Think All right. Uh, nope. Still the same. All right. So Aaron's playing Abyssal Dwarves. Uh, dirty, dirty. Uh, we're going with Decimator Horde. Uh, with a heart-seeking chant, another horde, and another horde. That's three hordes for those at home. All right. The rest of this list is really difficult. You guys you guys going to write this one down? Slave orcs. One, two, three, four, five, six hordes of slave orcs. One, two abyssal half-braid champions, one with staying stone, one with dwarven ale, and because you can't leave home without basusu, basusu. And then we've got George's list. He is using Twilight Kin. He's got a horde of crosswomen with the heart seeking chant, a regiment of buccaneers with the jar of the four winds. One, two, three, four hordes of the Dark Scythe Chariots. One has Potion of the Caterpillar. One has Wine of Elvenkind. One has the Brew of Sharpness. One has Fire Oil. He's got a Dark Lord on Black Dragon with the Blessing of the Gods. Pretty cool to give it both Vicious and Elite. Um, two High Priestesses of the Abyss, both mounted. And then a mounted Army Standard Bearer with the Diadem of Dragonkind. And then to top it off, two assassins, one with the blade of slashing. All right, let's hear it. Impressions. I just. George has so many wasted points in this list that I don't even know. What do like, you see is wasted in this one? Why do you give a blade of slashing to an assassin? Why do you give elite to a dragon lord when for five points you could take a blade of slashing and do pretty much the same? Yeah, but he's got lightning thing. also. So you Who throw cares? Lightning. It's lightning five. Come on, lightning. man. You five can, elite vicious. Yes. Come on. I'll take that. Really? I, I, but I see. I see what you mean, Jeff, with the wasted points and so many That's items. So I much. See, I see what you're saying. Nimble, I see what nimble you're on the chariots. Yeah. yeah, yeah I do see really? what you're saying. Come on. I mean, nimble on the chariots is good. I don't know about the sharpness. He no, has a hundred wasted points almost yeah. in here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, good. Yeah. Kind's good. I, I would have. Would I'd rather see another pre priestess or do something with the priestess. I know his his only intent here is to move them on the height not or the speed nine and mounts and do fireball, but give him a bane chain? I mean, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, it just seems, uh, and like the army BSB, just to take the um, diadem and dragon kind on, like, so you could have another one. Eh, like, I just a lot. I, do you really, do you really need that? Like, <laughs> again, George just takes a whole bunch of spam shooting, as many shots as he can pack into a list, and goes and says, this is my list. So, I mean, if he can pick up six hordes of slave orcs, then he might have a chance. But math says he doesn't. So, um, I'm gonna take Aaron by a twenty on this one. Well, a no, because he's gonna he's gonna lose he's gonna lose attrition stuff. He's gonna lose a couple of hordes yeah. that are 150 points. It's really gonna hurt his feelings a lot. <laughs> um, so, let's say he loses. 600 points here. What is that? And 17. So yeah, and he's got Basusu in there. Let's get give me Aaron 17-3. You know what Sorry, I didn't man. think of? Like, and, and this is no way you're beating this list. This is this is not to derail, but yeah. Did we adjust the uh, attrition scale to match up to 2,300 points? I don't think we did. It's just ten percent, right? Yeah. Well, for the uh, master's pack, for the pack, it's ten percent per point or something like that. Fifteen percent, right? It's ten percent per po per point. Anyway, 
things Grand aren't thought. brightens up live on the air. Yeah. Everybody's going, wait, why um, don't you guys know Oh that? my god, it's going to be such a big here. deal today. <laughs> it's, those that's, items that's, are going to That's why harder. you don't follow Mantic's pack. You just make your and that's own. And that's why uh, you don't buy Elite on your dragon. You pay for five <laughs> points. I like the Elite on the dragon. I think you're wrong on that. But I like the Elite on the dragon because it works every single turn. Not for 25 points. So works every single turn. Reining us in. <laughs> Fuck you! I want to be you off with the rails. your podcast that like stays on the rails. <laughs> that's, not, that's not split hairs, guys. Uh, uh, George's list is great. I do like the assassins, though. The assassins, the assassins are cool. I like the buccaneers too. Most of George's stuff is defense four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aaron has seventy-five <laughs> breath weapons. All of it minus the dragon is no. the- yeah. yeah, and he has seventy-five. Aaron, Aaron has seventy-five breath weapons We're with piercing. piercing. With one of them is piercing. And how many individuals? Oh, dude, that piercing too is right. Fun. And how many individuals? I don't see. I, I I've heard. Uh, I, I I've heard tales of George O'Connell. It's like a myth of how good the guy is, and how how good the lists are. It's I've never met George. I, yeah. How did you not meet him at Masters last year? Obviously good. I, you know, he was I, the I guy that had people. the ogres as tree shamblers and <laughs> a Belrog as a dragon and warriors <laughs> as elves. And- Dude, I don't remember my own list. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember you staying up till 4 a.m. talking with this. Look at that, right, back right. off the rails. Fuck you, Jake. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, Jake. <laughs> you know, I'm going to give this to Aaron uh, just because of all oh. the uh, breath that he has and all the low defense that Joe. Uh, George has. Otherwise, both lists are really good. And I agree with Jeff. There's so many wasted points. He's right about that. Yeah. The Brew of Sharpness. I don't know why you would have Brew of Sharpness. On See, the I, I could pass on that, but I like the other stuff. What are you going to do with those assassins anyway? I mean, like, they're great. I like them in the list, but fuck, they're free points for Aaron. Like, <laughs> like turn, burn, dead. It's like an extra eight shots that pretty no, no. likely are going to hit. Awesome. Right? That's all it is. Yeah. But versus Aaron, they're yeah. horrible. Right, right. That's totally useless again there. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to go. Yeah. With Aaron. Um, I, I, so Greg is actually live tweeting under the Unplugged Radio, and he said that Aaron versus George is the, is the love story of our generation. <laughs> <laughs> um, George is at home raging right now, man. We love you, buddy. We're just giving you a hard time. Don't troll me like that. <laughs> but yeah. I think I think Aaron's list just basically looks at what George's list does, says shrug, and then just keeps doing what it wants to do anyway. Like, eh. Aaron's eh. list does that with a lot of armies. Yeah. Right. Eh. Fair. yeah, when you think about this, you look at this army in competition, and when you think about like the change, the slave orcs, in this matchup, that defense five plus change is gonna mean absolutely zero. And you know, I I think he's something I think he's tied with this list like once. Maybe lost once with it in competition. I don't think so. Aaron's list. No, I it's don't just think so. you know uh, Shiloh. Maybe I don't know. I think Shiloh, he might have lost one. Okay, maybe. but I think he must be like uh, you know ten and one or something in in yeah. in the fact that he's there's not he, much he's scared of. Not much. So it's like you're just gonna you know, he, he's George is not gonna get to anything that he actually wants to kill. He's gonna have to you know just those slave orcs are just gonna be this wall he can't get through. And then when he does, there's going to be, you know, 75 or whatever yeah. decimator shots for whatever he has left that has gotten through the slave orcs, maybe. So, yeah. And when Basusu's done drinking his beer, he'll be oh, like, Jesus, be right back, guys. This to me, <laughs> and what we've seen so far, and I know uh, George has put up in his list or whatever, uh, and again, we say this with no, uh, these are just our own uh, right. ideas. This is the first possible 20 O that I've seen so far that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised only being 18 or 17. Like you said, you lose a couple of those slave war cords, which I think is probably part of his overall strategy to do that. You're going to lose, mm-hmm. you know, 300, uh, 550. But this to me is the, uh, the biggest no brainer that we've seen so far. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's too much. That seventy-five decimator shots are just gonna melt George's army. Yeah, and George's eighteen. Play. George's eighteen unit strength. Yeah, not for long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aaron has twenty-eight. Eight, I think. Nine, yeah, it's not yeah. twenty-eight, is it? Yeah, six yeah. hordes is three each plus three more hordes. 
27. Yeah. Sorry. Close. Yeah. 27. Oh, yeah, I, I, one. I was like, how do you Fuck get 28? <laughs> you're, you're only adding threes. Yeah, uh, I know. And, and yeah. kudos, kudos to uh, Aaron for taking the slave orcs regardless of you know now hitting on five. It, it doesn't. It no, doesn't. No, no, no. I, I do give that to hurt her. him at all. I give he it to him a little bit. That's uh, that's a little bit of a. It brings them more in line. They were a little too good earlier, but yeah, yeah, they were bit. they were just barely. He's still taking them. So they're, they're still good. Spam list. No, no, no. We're not. Yeah, yeah. That. It's, it's more. It's more list. about. It's more about having. Well, it's the masters, guys. I mean, look at the goblin list. He's not going to do too well against those kind of things now. But um, yeah, yeah, maybe we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, I think the goblin stuff will have more volume, but anyway. Okay, I'll take the <laughs> All right, so you, you guys went uh, landslide on that for Aaron, then, huh? Yeah. Uh, nope. I don't what? know how there's a way on the planet. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, let's jump over to table eight. We've got Aaron Ridgely versus Jeff Shitgun. Shit, Glenn. <laughs> Shilkin. Shilkin. I'm sorry. That, you totally did that on purpose. That that L dropped out. <laughs> I didn't so I have, play him at Shiloh this year, so it's okay. Uh, How about Aaron? Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. No, never mind. I I skipped. I was right. Yep. Those two. You're good. Go for okay. It. So I have Aaron's list, and he is playing uh, Army After My Own Heart. He's playing Undead. So he has two regiments of skeleton warriors. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, interesting. He's got a horde of revenants with Brew of Strength, which I love that item on that unit. Mm hmm. Um, he's got two troops of wraiths, a uh, horde of zombie trolls, two hordes of werewolves, and these are all naked. Mm -hmm. um, Body revenant, a revenant cavalry regiment with caterpillar. He's got a revenant king with loot of darkness, and it's mounted. King on a worm, love it. Uh, Cursed pharaoh with wings of honey maze, still a great unit. And then Very he has good. a necromancer with heal and inspiring talisman. What's my have, shit grinning friend bringing? I have Jeff Shulkin, and he's bringing Forces of the Abyss. No, he's not. <laughs> Those are his allies. Those oh, that's his allies. allies. Yeah. My apologies. I'm just looking at the list. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> we're on table eight, right? Put your yeah, diaper you're on. No, you're right. So you're Jeff Shulkin is from the Midwest, and he's being Varinger with uh, allies. Uh, there you go. Uh, okay, so he has a troop of oh, <laughs> naked. <laughs> 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 it's not going to be worse than those goblin lists with the uh, halfling. Uh, yeah. Berengar with, with, with epistles. Illegal. Okay, so so he anyway. has a. Let me start again. He has a troop of gargoyles, and then he has uh, naked, and then he has a horde of tortured souls naked. He has an abyssal champion with wings, naked. and these are his allies naked. Yes, these are his allies. <laughs> well, they're allies. They got to be naked. 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 Buck naked. Then he has uh, Varinger. He's got the fallen, two hordes. He's got two regiments of the mounted sons of Corgan. Both of them has the have the gift of Corgan with uh, which fury. is in fury, and one of them has the caterpillar. And he has a horde of direfang riders with the brew of haste, a king on chimera with the snake stone, a scald mounted, another scald mounted with the banner of the griffin, and that's his list. I like it. I think Jeff has this. Um, oh God, yeah. <laughs> I I, I play Undead a lot at them, and Aaron's list has a lot of stuff that's slow. He doesn't have, I, I don't know, a lot of his, it, basically all his options that are doing damage training on four is minus the two hordes of werewolves. But they don't have enough crushing strength to really threaten a lot of it, um, Jeff's stuff. Jeff has basically several units that can pop almost anything in Aaron's army in one go. Um... Plus, Aaron took zombie trolls, which is always a mistake. So. <laughs> you just don't, you don't know what you're doing, man. They're fine. <laughs> they're points yeah, effective. Going, Jeff. They are points effective. But not competitive. Like, that's a nice way of saying they're crap, but they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they are cheap crap. Crushing for two. A Crushing two, fearless 18, defense four. We're not Come on. here to argue. No, they suck. I'm, I'm with Wifely. you. We're absolutely here to argue. What the <laughs> zombie, fuck zombie are you talking about? Awful. They're zombie horrible. 
<laughs> Whose podcast is this? <laughs> I could see a zombie troll six horde spam list, but other than that, I don't know. Yeah, one of them's not enough. I will agree with yeah. you. Um, I think you, if you take four four hordes of zombie trolls, you start. I mean, I run depth horrors, and I'll tell you, these guys are ten points cheaper, Dem-Hars still have the freeze, same man. fearless it's eighteen a huge difference. Huge. But cr- I, I understand, <laughs> but. Crushing Strength 2 and Life Leech 1 and the capability to do the surge shenanigans with a good player behind that kind of stuff, you can hit angles that... If you have four hordes, maybe, but ugh. Yeah. Guys, Aaron is bringing two regiments of Skeleton Warriors. How have you not talked about that yet? <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Two masters? <laughs> this is yeah. Just, you know, just, yeah. Are they going to paint up the zombies drops, in time? True. Aaron does Let me have guess, they, they're going to bounce. <laughs> he does have a lot of surge. Because he's got yeah. four sources, sources See, of surge. I was... But is he surge at anything that's really going to no. hurt? And him? that's sort of the problem. It's like, no. you know, everything right. that he's got, it, like, you can surge zombie trolls in the flank and they'll bounce so frequently. Let's be realistic. He doesn't have any mummies. You lose. No. So. There's no mummies. <laughs> the troop assault right. are really good. I, I, but I've got to give it to Jeff. Jeff is going to blow through Aaron. Like he's just yeah. going to, it's going to be like paper and it's going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Jeff has got probably, I mean, probably one of the best records this year. Uh, lots of wins in tournaments, lots of at least top two play, top two, top three placements. And with a list Gr- like this, gross not- ass list. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, he's not going to be pumping any chumps in this one, but I mean, this is about as close as he's going to get because Aaron, on top of that, doesn't have any shooting. So Jeff's just like, sweet, like, awesome. <laughs> you know, he doesn't care. Sorry, sorry, Aaron. Uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and just you yeah, talk about too. his deceptive amount of surge, and he may have four surge casters, but they're gonna. <laughs> no targets has, to be dead. Yeah, and how he surges, you have the Revenant King that's got loot, right? So then you know you have a, a, a surge caster on an undead worm who's flying around. So and same thing with Cursed Pharaoh. So really, you have one surge caster to surge the zombie trolls, mm-hmm. um, or the revenants, or whatever you want to do. And with that flying that he has, and it's just like, yeah, yeah, uh, I this is not good looking too good. Um, um, skeleton warriors are cool. Maybe he has some. He likes the, you know, they're painted and they're cheap. I guess. I mean, I think I those type of units. That. Their nerve is pretty decent. They're cheap. I mean, it's yeah, right. points, right? But if you're that, if, if in this type right, of list, yeah. I want to see uh, more more surge, or I want to yeah. see a, a little stronger middle, or I want to see, okay. I want to see. This is not quite a fast list, and mm-hmm. it's not quite a sustained slow shamble right. list either. It's kind of in the middle, and I don't necessarily know it and can it do either right. or. You know, it right. feels like you couldn't quite decide: do I want to go elite fast, so we, or do I want to go? You know. So we got three undead players on here. What's y'all's take on the uh, revenant cav with a uh, caterpillar? Uh, Revan and Cav struggle to fight their way out of wet paper bags, and giving them caterpillars just throwing points on it. Yeah, I agree. My point is, like, if you were really wanted to uh, get past a piece of terrain, why not move through the piece of terrain and, and then surge. surge them? I mean, you've got plenty of surge. It's really a waste of points, I think. And ideally, but, Revenant Cav need to be surging in flanks. Otherwise, they're not right. Going to their do point, anything. yeah, they don't do enough. Yeah. And Rev Rev Cav troops are so good as screening and chat. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That to me, I'd rather have two Rev Cav troops going around, maybe supporting the werewolves or whatever. I just mm-hmm. think that. And you look, you know, what are the two best heavy cav in the game? You have the Sons of Corgan and Soul Reaver Cav, right? Mm-hmm. And there's two regiments, and there's no Soul Reaver. So, I mean, those regiments of uh, Sons of Corgan are just going to smash into whatever they want to. Yeah, and it's going to be... They're going yeah. to pick up units. I mean, those are the two strongest cab units in the game, I think. So, The only thing he's got going for him is if he's a fucking wizard with werewolves. I'm just yeah, telling and you. Then you can't, no, that's a great point, Jeff, because that nimble, you can really catch people out. And mm-hmm. werewolves, you can redeploy. You can do so many awesome things that if he is like... The, the issue is our Mozart he's, playing, he's playing Jeff Shilkin. So yeah. and Jeff has been playing nimble the entire yeah. year. with those fallen right. So that's the thing. If you play nimble, you you begin to develop those eye eyesights and those lines and being in to be able to anticipate how nimble works. So if he has experience okay. with nimble, then he's going to be tough to catch him out. I think. Yep. Ryan and Jeff can do it better because he has two hordes of fallen. As 
Well, <laughs> Fallen Ark is speed eight. nine, so a, I mean it's something, eight, right? I mean, it was no, two of them. Not, yeah, speed seven, yeah, eight. eight sorry, it used to be like four. Uh, Ryan, did you get to weigh in? Uh, no, but I'm gonna go with Jeff as well. I just I, I come with everybody else that I think he's just gonna blow through every unit he charges. There's right. not. So we got another uh, landslide new. there. So let's go over to well, table did, did nine. Rashad, did Rashad comment on that one? I, 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 I waited on Jeff. I was going to say Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. I, I figured he, he yeah. had a couple of very Jeff-heavy statements. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump into table nine. We've got Kyle Poole versus Nathan Clevenger. Midwest versus Southeast matchup. Couple. You mean Kyle Poole? Kyle? Kyle? <laughs> I've never seen Kyle spelt with a C. I had neither. Oh, okay. That's I thought why I was going to spell Sile. cool, I thought, but. Yeah. Sile would okay. be cool, too. It's definitely so I got, Kyle. It's Kyle. I got definitely Kyle. Kyle, though. Let's just get that straight. Get it straight, Jake. <laughs> it's definitely Kyle. All right. So he's playing goblins, I think. Yes, goblins. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Six regiments of rabble. A horde of spitters with fire oil, three trombones, because that's what you do. Uh, a king mounted with blade of slashing, a king on a chariot, a flagate with diadem mounted, three giants, nice. All right. And then yeah, allied a, this. A, a horde of lichens, a chimera with wings, and a centaur chief. Hmm. Well, sir, you are playing the Nathan Clevenger of the Southeast, the one guy that doesn't believe in spamming all shooting in the Southeast. <laughs> so uh, Nathan is a very solid player. Uh, he is bringing his tried and true Empire of Dust mummy spam with triple mummy regiments with a blade of slashing on one of them. Two hordes of guardian archers because the southeast can't leave home without something that shoots. Got to shoot a little uh, bit. Yeah, one with one with Chana hate, one blessing of gods. Then we get away from all that shooting bullshit and go back to scavengers. Uh, regiment of those guys, two bone giants. What, hey, what do the scavengers have? <laughs> the diadem of dragon. Yes. I get away from, not getting away bullshit. from the shooting. <laughs> and I, you gotta I mean, come on, man. You know that that's a wasted fucking thing. They're 10, 12, bro. Yeah. Come on. You, you're yeah. giving that your diadem? C come on, man. Double bone giants. Curse type. Yeah, use those. Take that diadem off and give something to these cursed priests, bro. Uh, tri a double bone giant. And then you we go did to give type. something to the priests. I'm just saying, give them more. Uh, we <laughs> you did not mount him. I mean, you could mount him. He's right above that. Yeah, you could mount the priest. Right the one last uh, thing you could do. He's got a cursed priest uh, twice. Um, both have fireball and vicious. Both have heal four. Banner of the griffin on one. And... Uh, Amulet of Fireheart on the other. See, that's where I would have given them the the bonus to heal. That would have been better than that. And then a sh Idol of Shobik. Uh, I'll tell you from experience, Nathan can pilot the shit out of this list. I love so, this list. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. This is going to be a really, really the game of the Giants. Episode. There's going to be five Giants on the board. Isn't that going to be legit? <laughs> oh, it's going to be so cool. But I'll tell you, that's not. I don't know, man. I don't Giant know. If, bash. I don't know if if uh, Kyle wants to see all those guardian archers shooting over all of his height right. one stuff at all of his height four <laughs> chimera and double and triple giants. True. I'm gonna go yeah. with Nathan. Um, the mummy regiments are so solid, and so Kyle yeah. doesn't have things that are easy answers <laughs> to them. No, except for um, trombones, I suppose. Trombones. But they gotta maybe, get close, though. But, but they yeah, gotta, they gotta get close. They yeah. gotta get close, and you've gotta like get pretty much all three into one mummy regiment, right? Mummies are so robust, and on top of that, he's got the rally within right. range. On top of that, mm -hmm. like so good, breaking all like fucking twenties and shit. And then Ugh. he's got the surge to make the mummies an offensive threat too. The bone giants mm -hmm. are an offensive threat, and he's got a little bit of shooting to back it up. I think this is going to be a really cool matchup to see because both these armies are going to want to fight while having a little bit of shooting. But I think Nathan has more tools to deal with what Kyle's bringing. And anything Nathan touches, he's going to kill. Everything has crushing two <laughs> or more. <laughs> you know, just everything that he cares about. Jesus, just fuck me. All right, yeah, 
Nathan, pretty hard on this one. I, 18 for me. Yeah, you know, I look at it and I see the kind of similar to what Jake was saying. I see three three mummy regiments and heal eight and banner of the Griffin behind it. Plus Shobik, who show, I mean, this guy is so good. I mean, with speed seven mm -hmm. and just being able to hang out behind things, move out, and then get surged. Um, it's fucking dirty. It's dirty, dirty. And he's one of those things. You go anywhere close to him and you have this surge that he has, he's going to be able to get that idol into whatever he wants. Um, and, like, you, I just don't see what he has that he can deal with the mummies except maybe, like, both giants or the lichens and a giant. Or he's going to have to get two units into the chance to kill those mummies or they're just going to outgrind him. Shobik so. adds another life leech on top of it to his aura, doesn't he? Yeah, he has he get, like, the plus he one get, life leech. He, he, well, he gives everyone iron resolve. He has an iron oh, resolve. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron, iron, resolve. iron resolve bubble. Even so that, that think about it. Mummies, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, regening, <laughs> life leeching, yeah. getting healed, and Shobik's iron resolve. I mean, those units will never die. That's Just what I'm saying. You know. Nathan, dude, why'd you waste those points on that breath weapon, man? Give that other give give your other caster the plus to heal, bro. I mean you have heal. Yeah. Or you know, give one, one of them. The, the He's got pain. fourteen right now. He could have three more. He could have nineteen, <laughs> seventeen. Yeah. You give the the middle mummy regiment of the three regiments brew of courage, and then now yeah. it's dash twenty with iron resolve. I get what he's trying to do, but I just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I'm going uh, Nathan pretty hard. I just think his list is so durable that the goblins are just going to like bounce right off it after giving some nice mummy massage, and then the mummies will take care of it. <laughs> Nathan mummy is so hot right now. Massage. He's so <laughs> hot right now. Uh, Ryan, we had heard from you. What are you thinking? Uh, I got Nathan. I don't think those mummies are going anywhere because uh, he's the goblins will plink them, and that's not what you need to do to mummies. You need to wipe them off in one go because otherwise they're going to be right back to full and then they're just going to sit there uh, and mummies i think i think mummies are one of the best units in the game so i'm jealous oh, yeah. oh, my good. my ancients are the same price and salamanders are and are not nearly as good <laughs> so yeah i i just can't see nathan's core being moved so i, I i'm gonna i think nathan <laughs> handily rashad have you weighed in yet i have not all right. I'm looking at the drops. Uh, Kyle has 19 drops and Nathan has 11. So that might be the only thing that could swing it into Kyle's. Because Kyle has a list. It's kind of like waiting for you to come at it, and then it's going to breath weapon you. And Nathan has a list. It's kind of like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to shoot this shit out of you. I'll give it a Nathan, but it's interesting to see 19 drops versus 11. He's going to pick his, you know, where what sits very well. Kyle, Kyle I do like your list, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I really yeah. like yeah. the Giants, and I think mm -hmm. it's really fun. I just think that this is a bad matchup for you, brother. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that drop differential would be a lot more telling if there was no uh, surge in the other mm -hmm. list. Because with Surge, he can kind of get around some bad deployment. Um, but yeah. All right. We'll cool. see. Maybe if it's token based, it will be harder for Nathan. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. That's what he's hoping for. Is, you uh, got to spread uh, those tokens. If, well, yeah. I mean, if it's loot based, right? Like if you actually have to pick something up because then Nathan can't surge half of his shit with a token. I mean, like it, it yeah. really uh, you know, it, yeah. it impacts. It's an impact. It's, it's something that could help. No. Just pointing it yeah, out. Yeah, because then killing one unit actually does matter because yeah, Nathan only has a handful that could pick up a token. Right. Uh, cool. Let's jump over to table 10. We have Austin Howell versus Brindley Smith. That's a mountain versus Pacific Northwest matchup. All right. I'm done drinking Brindley's my, the guy that we like go fund right? Hormones, so I'm going to go get some. Yeah, yeah. All right. You <laughs> guys <laughs> <are> drink. <laughs> oh, oh, grape juice, my grape juice. <laughs> and I've got Austin Howell's list. Um, All right. So he's playing elves and like Mark was saying, he's from the mountain region. So we've got a troop of palace guard, two troops of silver breeze, two hordes of war chariots, one with chant of hate, one with heart seeking chant, two dragon breath weapons, um, two dragon kindred lords, one with haste, one with blade of slashing. Then he allied in brotherhood. He has a regiment of brotherhood on foot, 
two of the Valain scout <laughs> dudes, um, who not with the bows, just with the like the reconnoiters. Reconnoiters. However you say it. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. The reconnoiters. Reconnoiters. <laughs> yeah. Recon dudes. And um, and Exemplar <laughs> Forsaken. Nice. Hmm. Interesting. That Forsaken dude is awesome. Yeah, he's fucking stupid good. Okay, so he's playing Brinley Smith. And yep. who's playing also from Pacific Northwest. And he has some ogres. Uh, he's got a regiment of red goblins, a horde of warriors with caterpillar, two hordes of siege breakers, one with the mace of crushing. Oh, he's got a horde of hunters. Awesome. Yeah. A, a horde of boomers. I love hunters. So yeah. Hun hunters are good. A horde of boomers, an army standard bearer. Uh, he's got some heat missiles. He's got uh, <laughs> two red goblin bigots. I love them. Um, mounted. Both mounted. Yeah, yep. both mounted for that speed ten. Is how as as Would as you, you do. Hug seeking no? missiles. No, I gotta give the. Hug. the I want a hug. I want a hug. I gotta give the chat another marker for the as you do. I think they're keeping track of that. So, <laughs> um, so the two red goblin bigots mounted. Grokamagok. Uh, a red goblin blaster. Oh, this oh. is going to be interesting. He also has Brotherhood that. allies. Oh, huh. so <laughs> he's got two troops of Vlain martyrs, two regiments of martyrs, and an uh, exemplar adjutant. Huh. Adjutant, yep. Yeah. Uh, are... My brain is kind of hurting a little bit. Those are weird allies. <laughs> yeah, this <Yeah>. is strange. <laughs> nah, it's just a lot of chaff. I mean, for cheap. Yeah. Fine. Some even inspires them for cheap. Uh, um, what do you guys think? I'm gonna go last. Give everybody else a option uh, on this one. Who are you, Jeff? You go first. You keep saying I'm gonna go. No, first. no, don't make him go. God, this is gonna be like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the way I see it, uh, Austin's list does not have nearly enough backbone in it. It's got a lot of drops, but if you look, there's really there's not a lot of substance. You don't have a center. When you have two dragon lords in it, right? You can't afford a lot. That's what I'm saying. Like, I yeah. mean, there's that's not a lot of holding power mm -hmm. for scenarios. So he's playing a no center center. <laughs> the no yeah, center center. Yeah. yeah. Not everybody's as. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, Shut but, the fuck up. No. <laughs> uh, but I'm just looking at this stuff. I mean, he's got the war chariots. That's yeah. decent, but. I think Brinley is going to put a hurt on that pretty good. Uh, I mean, two two hordes of siege breakers. Shit's just gonna bounce off those dudes. They don't back down to nothing. They're gonna go where they want, be where they want, and stay where they want. Hunters, super great. Boomers, a little bit of reach there. A lot of chaff. A lot of don't give a shit. Throw it away. Grokkigamok. So I mean, much of let, Brinley's stuff does so much damage. So much damage. I mean, just stupid. He's going to one-hit pop. Yeah. Grokkigamok will one-hit drop a dragon in the face. The Horde of Hunters, <laughs> all those things, most of the things in Austin's list can't stand up to, right? He's right. eventually going to have to get hit. Yeah, and there's so much chaff that you're never going to get the charge you want to get. So I just don't... I mean... It's not going to be a just total trouncing because those dragons can just fly around and never engage if he really wanted to, but that doesn't really get him anything for his 600-point investment in him. Um, but if I was piloting these lists, I'd want Brinley's list for sure, so give me mm -hmm. Brinley. Yep, I'll, I'll agree with Brinley. I think um, this is going to be one that the, the scenario is going to matter a lot, but there's more scenarios that Brinley wants to see, and especially against Austin's list. And vice versa, I think. Austin only has a couple of scenarios where he looks at it and it's good for him versus Brindley. Yeah, I'm going to roll with Brindley too. Um, just because I know how he plays this and it's the way he runs. It's with with all that chaff. Um, it's going to be tough for Austin to pick the pick the fights. The only way he does it is if those, those two Dragon Lords can do a lot though. And honestly... Brinley doesn't have a lot of answers for him. Um, so if those two dragon lords can pull off some good stuff, then I could see Austin pulling it out. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I think it'd be tough for Brinley to not get it. I was coming to, uh, 
I would say Brimley is going to get this as well. The Elfless is just too... Uh, don't know what it wants to do. Kind of got not that much shooting, and then it does have a lot of mini Mark. anvils. I right. There's a lot of points, but not a lot of substance. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't know how it's going to do against a very effective uh, ogre list. And you know, this ogre list will be very different against like a shooting heavy list, but it's it's not a shooting heavy list. What uh, Austin is running, so I'm going to go for Brindley as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, those red, like you said, he's got all the chaff elements that he needs. The goblin bigots are great. Um, the martyrs are great. I mean, it's just like those siege breakers are just going to be just so tough for him to to move that he's going to have to play those, like Ryan was saying, he's going to have to play those dragons so creatively and so well. But I just don't I just see this ogre list really just out, out outlasting and being there at the end of the game. I think so. I'm gonna go with Brindley as well. Just on a side note, I've never seen hunters on the field. And really? No, awesome. I've never seen them. Awesome. You're a good player. They look, They're amazing. Yeah, they look awesome. Yeah. And uh, just the one thing that surprises me about them when I first read hunters, I was like, they gotta have bows, right? They gotta have something that shoots. But nope. they don't have anything guard that and shoots. pathfinder and snare, yeah. man. That's all you need. I mean, they're amazing. Like, sit if you're a good player, player, you can jack people with them. They're really. They do good. not have Vanguard, though. By the way, right? They only have Ensnare and Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Yeah, sorry, Pathfinder. Which is which is uh, also brutal, brutal Pathfinder. Pathfinder is better. They're yeah, basically yeah, like yeah. slow werewolves with Ensnare and Pathfinders. That's what right. they are. And brutal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is dope. So they're really, really good. For two twenty, dude. Yeah, I mean, or two twenty, two thirty, something like that. I'm kind of surprised I've never seen them. It's just those siege breakers, you know, as you do, man. Those are just so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, people would rather spend 30 more points there, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. All righty. Let's jump over to table 11. We've got Ray Wyant versus Keith Kobiski. I hope so. Uh, that is a Northeast versus Mountain matchup. Rashad, you've got the first read, so take it away with Ray when you're ready. I'm going to read Ray. Just give me a moment. There he is. Beta Ray Bill. Ray is being undead, it looks like. Okay, Skeleton Warriors. Again, a regiment. What are we missing? <laughs> All right. Uh, skeleton Spearman Horde of 40. Okay, that's great. Revenants with Fire Oil. Two troops of Wraiths. A regiment of Mummies. Two regiments of Zombies. A Horde of Whites with the Blessing of the Gods. Soul River Cavalry with the Chalice of Wrath. A cursed pharaoh with the wings of honey mace. And a lich king with bane shan, lightning bolt, heal six. And another lich king with heal six and shroud of the saint. Lots of bodies in this one. Lots of slow bodies. Good. It is. Interesting. Hey, Jake, is this Ray that came up to Lady Lake with everybody? Yeah, he also finished, finished I think, tying for fourth at Masters last year. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I played him. I played him at Lee. He's a, he's a good dude. Must be really good. He's really chill. What was his second list again? Uh, that Seth, was Seth Kabalski. Kabalski. Okay. The Revenants Kibisky? were a board, too. I don't know if uh, we got so. that in there. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm just going to assume. Yeah. All right, so Seth is rocking elves. He's from the mountain region. He has three troops of Silver Breeze. Two hordes of dracons, all of those are naked. Uh, two hordes of chariots, one with hate, one with heart seeking chant. Two dragon breaths, a mounted army standard bearer with a diadem of dragon kind. Uh, two mages, uh, both are mounted, both just have fireball. And then a dragon lord with healing brew. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So, Surprised he didn't put anything else on the mages, spell wise, just fireball. Yeah, I guess he's trying to use them as chaff. Chaff. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to go with Ray. Um, I played against Ray a lot. He's a really, really good player. Elves are like half the meta in the Northeast of Mid Atlantic. So, elves, he's super used to facing. And Ray has so much nerve on the table. 
that I think Seth is really going to struggle to get through things. Um, and the only thing about Ray's list is the Whites and the Soul Reavers are really the only things that are going to do major damage. Everything else is more just sit there and soak it. But I don't think the Elves have the ability to easily reach out and touch those two options before Ray commits them because there's so much surge in the Undead list. Well, and he's got two Lich Kings on top of that for heal. Right. Well, and he's got heal if he really wants it. Plus six, so he's yeah. got heal fifteen. Mm. Yep. Yep. I'll just be quick on mine. Yeah, uh, Ray, give me Ray on this one. He has enough stuff to fly out, lock down a couple of things that uh, you know that mu that. Uh, what you call it? Uh, Curse Pharaoh with the hun honey, 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 and uh, wings of honey maze, and then Solar River Cav, super powerful. They're gonna smash through pretty much anything that Seth has, provided they don't get hit by both Dracons. They'll survive one of them. I mean, I I've played against Ray. I know he's a solid player, so give me Ray. The only thing I worry about when looking at Ray's list is. He's got to make sure the Soul Reavers don't get isolated by themselves. Mm. He's, in looking in the list, he doesn't really have anything that jumps that jumps off at me that's going to go with the Soul Reavers. The Wraith. Uh, the Wraith, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Wraiths are maybe... But they're going to eat outpaced, right? And the Pharaoh. No, move 10. Or the Pharaoh, maybe. The Pharaoh, the Pharaoh. will, go with, but the Pharaoh will you're, have no whatever he needs, but uh, you're right. You're, you're very right. He doesn't have much else. And that's just a, a soul reaver is a very expensive unit. If you if that doesn't do any work and you lose it or, or get unlucky or whatever, that's a, a huge blow to take. The race the race are in the list specifically to accompany because you're going to move the uh, soul reavers probably not full sixteen. Move the yeah. race ten the race charge and that makes sense. Anything. And then you yeah. and then that's a lot of defense six. I think race. Punish whoever you, charges you, them. You can use race the cover for the soul reavers too to give you a little shooting. Or you sit change. the soul reavers in your core, let things hit your big chunky. Yeah. Boards and then just smash face once again. Start out, yeah. I like it. I think heal six with Shroud. I think Shroud on a Lich is awesome. Really That's good. good. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Amazing. it? You're healing anything with Life Leech, right? Life Leech is yep. a double. Like, so Life Leech one counts as like heal two, basically. Right. So, uh, you know, heal 11 or whatever or 12 on something. That it's it's a serious amount of heal. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, I think I'm going to go with you guys. You know, I think I, I think I like Ray's list here. Yeah, I like race too. Um, although, like like you said, Jeremy, if those soul reavers don't hit home and do work, yeah, he might be in trouble. Um, yep. But it, it it sounds like he knows how to put those where they need to go. Um, and as long do as he does that, soul reavers know uh, how to not do work. I mean, <laughs> trust me, I, trust I've me been waiting do. for that to happen. I've never seen it. Let's play, Mark. <laughs> And then but, you'll, you'll see how that, what happens when they suck. So I when you see when you see them three turns in a row, uh, you know, uh, just charge sixty five points units. You, you're like, why did I invest three hundred points in this shit? That's really I the would, only. I thing would that love happens. to see that. I have yet to. <laughs> it, happens, it happens. I'll chime in real quick. Uh, I I'm surprised about this undead list. Really surprises me because it's so slow. But it has so many bodies, and it's interesting to see that in this meta, I didn't expect it. I don't think overall it's too competitive for this meta, but against this list that doesn't have much shooting with, there could be so much shooting in this elf list, and there's just not. So I, I would give it also to a rare. But I think this is going to be really close, because the Dracon Riders can do a lot of work. They're, he Ray doesn't have much hit that he doesn't have any hitting units other than the soul weavers and the whites right and the whites have the blessing of the gods which is so so on them mm -hmm. it's okay uh but he's got the pharaoh it's a it's gonna be an interesting one i'm gonna give it to ray just because i think he's got lots of bodies and seth doesn't have that much shooting but the dragons and the dragon riders are gonna do a little bit of work silver breeze are gonna give ray some trouble too that too a little bit yeah. brew of sharpness on whites is just so good so i just good. don't know how you know find those points for that item for that unit right right it would be much better on it yeah maybe all right uh god you guys keep doing landslides uh let's jump over to <laughs> table 12 we've got 
some jokesters together. We've got Jesse Cornwell versus this Shannon Shoemaker. Right? Yeah. Mid Atlantic <laughs> Midwest. <laughs> All right. Yep, you're first up, Jeff. Yep, I'm pulling up Jesse's right now. All right, so GSA. Bringing the pain train dubbed. Uh, this is Ogres. I know, crazy shocker for you guys. Uh, so painful for Jesse. No <laughs> yeah. So he's got two hordes of Siege Breakers, Brew of Courage, and Staying Stone. Two hordes of Boomers, Naked. Two troops of Red Goblin Scouts. Uh, a horde of chariots uh, with Caterpillar. A horde of chariots with Dwarven Ale. One, two, three standard bears. One with a banner of Griffin. One with a blade of slashing because five points and didn't have anything else to do with it. And two of the new, three of the new Ogre Boomer Sergeants. Pretty good. All right. And he's playing as Shannon. Yep. And I've got Shannon's list. Um, Shannon is running three hordes of rabble. And he's running, I think, all goblins. Are there any allies in here? No, no, no allies. No. So all goblins. He's got three hordes of rabble, a horde of spitters with the heart seeking champ, uh, two hordes of the flea bag chariots, one with potion of caterpillar, one with fire oil. Three four trombones, three big rocks throwers, three uh, goblin king on chariots. Woo! One with brew of haste, one with pipes of care, and one with quicksilver rapier. Three whizzes, one with alchemist curse and inspiring talisman, one with circlet of blood, and another with alchemist curse and the fire heart, and then three mincers. Hmm. Huh. Yep. You know, I played against Shannon on this list on Universal Battle the other uh, like a week or so ago, mm -hmm. and it's really um, uh, it's a great list. And this type of list is so powerful if he gets that extra turn, or, or if you get if you roll that last turn. You know, I can see that you know maybe Jesse could be in a pretty good position, but you roll that turn seven, a lot of his units is going to have damage on it. And that last round of shooting is just so good um, with this list. And I just don't know. I mean, he's just just so many drops running around and even just those so many cheap drops that can do so much. I mean, I know Jesse's great with those ogres. He's, he's um, well-versed in that list. Um, it's gonna be close. I'm gonna say if there's a turn seven, it's gonna go to Shannon. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a draw. I think it's gonna be close. We neglect I, to point out that Jesse did not bring Sweaty Gigante. Yep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. So sad. I He's a Jesus. Be, uh, He's gonna be disappointed. Will he? Yeah. Have, what is it? The the cheese it box to roll dice in? Will Will he yeah. be doing that with him? <laughs> I think the pie, the slice, up. the bite, oh man. It's gonna, <laughs> a you, lot you of guys... it's going to determine whether or not Shannon's big rock throwers can hit, right? I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. if, yeah. if they're on point, Jesse's going to be in trouble. If they're not, it gives Jesse some breathing room. Because um, Shannon does not want Jesse to get close fast, but Jesse is going to get close fast, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting matchup. Um, I'm going to go with Jesse because I think it's close, and I got to vote for the guy on my team um, in a close matchup like this. I think if Shannon – because he's not bringing enough shooting just to completely blast Jesse off the table with no chance. He does have quite a, a good amount, though, between the Kings on Chariots, the Fleabag Chariots, and the Spitters. Um, and then the Hordes of Rabbles are going to bog things up. Um but I think the Fleabag Chariots have such a big base, it's going to be tough to keep those line of sights and fire angles and stuff where you're able to focus fire. And the Ogre Army, you need to peel it off. Otherwise, once they get in, it doesn't matter if they're damaged. Yeah, they'll clean your ass up once they're in there, even if they were shooting units. That's the thing is that Jesse does have like 58 piercing shots, which will 
peel the shit out of some of these units real quick, um, given the chance. So, and you can throw those boomer sergeants out as chaff if you really have to. Who cares? I mean, he's got three three BSBs as chaff. I mean, so I mean, I don't know. I think this is going to be probably one of the closest matches we've yeah. seen yet, in my opinion. I I have a hard time choosing on this one, but um. I haven't played Jesse. I have played Shannon. So give me Jesse. Wow. <laughs> nice. nice. Harsh. Yeah, nice. Uh, well, we got to talk about the clock, too, right? He's going right, to be. Sure. Gonna be uh, he'll be. Uh, there's plenty of time on the clock. He he'll only has. He'll have six seconds left. Shannon has <laughs> Alchemist Curse 12 only, right? He does. He didn't oh, take yeah. the third one on the blood third blood wizard. Blood. Yeah, one has Blood Boil. No, because he took the Iron Crown. He's going to Blood Boil with it. Yep. How did I miss that? Okay, circle of blood. That's what it is. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Sorry, circle of blood. No, no, no. Uh, uh, it's, I'll give it to Shannon just because I think he's so smart. But <laughs> I think he's a real, real I've never met guy. Him, but he sounds so smart. No, he, 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 uh, no, he's got he's got a little bit more long range shooting. Oh, a lot. Yeah. A, a yeah, point. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And ogres are not just, necessarily known for their defense, although, yeah, except for the, the big shield in the front, the alchemist curse is going to be... I was thinking three alchemist curse would have been awesome against those siege breakers. I but, think two uh, will still mm -hmm. do the job. Mm -hmm. Two will yeah. still do, I mean, do well, yeah. If it becomes is an it issue, he'll just, he'll just turn sideways and he'll be defense four all of a sudden. So. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, I, like the, I like the amount of shooting Shannon has. Very I think, nice. The second I think... the Wizards get within Alchemist Curse, though, they get hey breath weapon doll because they're not on mounts, so they've got to get super... Like, they don't have that yeah. threat range. I don't know how none of us are bringing this up, but Jesse, remember, he does have two hordes of ogre chariots. Chariot. With 24 attacks each yes. hitting on threes with range. I mean, yeah. if. He, oh, man. The pain so, trade. <laughs> so, Ryan, you get to break the tie. It's two to two. Who do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with Jesse. Um, but I think what Jake said about the big rock throwers. Yeah. If Shannon's rock yeah. throwers go off, Jesse's in big trouble. Mm -hmm. I but think you're all I, wrong. Uh, chances are that doesn't happen. There's no free so breakfast, Jesse's so good. Jesse's going to be not feeling all that great. He's going to be <laughs> <hard enough. laughs> And he doesn't want to piss off the guy that's going to give him pizza at the end of the night, too, which is going to be Shannon. Solid Don't upset the, the pizza delivery guy. Actually, that's a good that's a good point. Hey, if you guys haven't talked to your uh, master's chairs and you're going to master's and you want to do the pizza night on Saturday, let them know and give them a head count so we can get the numbers in so we can get pizzas ordered. Yep. Thanks, Shannon. Yep. Uh, let's jump over to table 13. Uh, we've got Corey Reynolds and Jason. I hope I'm saying this right. Zamuda. You did. Good that job. is a West Coast Pacific Northwest matchup. Let's hear it. Okay, so we got Corey Reynolds uh, playing for West Coast, and uh, Corey is playing Elves. And this might this list is probably gonna uh, sound a little familiar. So uh, he's got two troops of Palace Guard, um, four troops of Silver Breeze Cav. He's got a regiment of Stormwind Cavalry with a Caterpillar, Dracon Riders, a horde of Dracon Riders this time with Brew of Strength. Two hordes of war chariots, one with wine of elven kind, one with heart seeking chant. We got an elven mage with bane chant, alchemist's curse, and the black iron crown. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's a, a nice kit loadout on that. And, and then we have um, three noble war chariots. One when one has inspiring talisman. All right, I'm going to read you guys Jason Smuda's list. He's got a horde of kindred archers with the heart-seeking Chen. Oh, by the way, he's from the Pacific Northwest, and he's running elves. So a horde of kindred archers with the heart-seeking Chen, a regiment of palace guard, a troop of kindred blade stalkers, a regiment of kindred tall spears, a troop of storm and cavalry with the blade of slashing, a horde of Draken riders with the brew of sharpness. War chariots, a horde with the wine of elven kind. Two bolt throwers. One army standard bearer with a loot. We should say ukulele, by the way. 
one Elvin Mage with Bane Chan, Fireball 10, and Inspiring Talisman, and another Elvin Mage with Bane Chan, Fireball 10, and Shroud of the Saint, a Dragon Kindred Lord with Chant of Hate. That's his list. So Corey is from the Northeast and is a very good player. I don't know Jason, but I think I like Jason's list a little bit more in this matchup. I think really? those bolt throwers are going to be pretty frightening for Corey. Um, they can just heal off those troops of Silver Breeze. They can do some decent damage to the War Chariots. Um, and then Corey is missing the Horde of Archers that I think give him a more stable firing base to operate from, whereas Jason's Horde of Archers I think is going to be really threatening for Corey. So I'm voting Jason, um, assuming that Jason's a good player. Uh, Jason is a good player. Um, I haven't played him in a while because he moved out to uh, Idaho, but um, I'm going to go with Jason too. I think he's just got – he has a lot of different – he didn't double anything but the mage, so he has – and the bolt throw, I guess, but he has a lot of – I feel like he has an answer for a lot of stuff. Um, and I think, well, as I say, he outshoots him, but he might not actually because the chariot shoot and he has the Silver Breeze Cavalry. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I don't think that's actually the case. Um, when you have the sources coming from multiple angles, you don't have that clear, you know, targeting, especially <clears throat> focus, fire lane. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd never thought of sharpness on Dracon Riders, but I guess, I mean, scary. they're not. They're not going to whip it a hit. Yeah. You're going to spin points. Might as well spin points, right? I was going to ask you guys. This is the third time I think we see this. Uh, is this a new thing? Because I thought Blessing of... No. No, uh, I mean, yeah. They, no, it's, they don't need Blessing. It's pretty pretty standard. Up, like We see it about either Brew Strength or Brew Sharpness. Or, or yeah. I like Haste on myself. Hey. Yeah. I like Haste. I think 25% of the time I see Dracons, they have it. So... You know, yeah. there's probably at least one person running in every GT up here. I just think mm. for the for the three or four misses that you're gonna have, because yeah. if you have you have blessing of the gods in them anyway, right? For the three or four misses, yeah, just give him a just give him a blade of slashing, like I keep saying. Something like that, right? Like one. Forty-five yeah. points is a lot Save for something. Forty that's points barely yeah. miss anything. I don't know why people are taking it. You can go is into that, ensnare potentially or to that and stuff like true, that. Very true. Or very true. Or be injured. True. Yep. Very true. Yeah. You're right about that. So, guys, catch me up real quick. I heard Ryan was in for Jason. Who, do, I who was else? I for Jason as well. Jake is in for Jason. Anybody else? Uh, no, I think uh, Rashad well, get was, the finishing, talking, was finishing. Wait, was Rashad, did you finish? Uh, I haven't given my opinion yet. I'm just going to go for Corey. Just yeah. because I think he has a black iron crown. Yeah. He, That's a really yeah. good one. That's one thing. Jason doesn't have that. If he had the Black Iron Count, I would have given it to Jason, but he doesn't have it. And he has a loot on a standard pair, which I didn't understand in this one. Right. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to give it to Corey just because of that. But other than that, it's very it's so tight. Jason does Loot on standard bear? What doesn't make sense about that? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, just because I would rather see the Black Iron Crown on one of the Elven Majors because they both have Bane Chan 2 already. It's like the third Bane Chain yeah, caster. Be a lot of Bane Chain. I just don't know well, why you have Inspiring Talisman on one, which is and great. Shard of Sand on the other. So, so one inspire. So he has two inspire. That makes it all makes sense. I just, I, I would rather with this list probably see uh, the Bane the Chain when you have Heart Seeking Chain on the Archers. The Bane Chain three with Elite is so good when yeah. you have a Horde Archers yeah. on one already. All right. So we've got. Two elf players here, and I'm looking at both the lists. And the thing that's most blatant about this to me is Corey's list screams, "I am a finesse player, and I am going to catch angles." That's why you divide into these three chariots instead of taking a dragon for the 300 points. He's not planning on going straight at your face. He's going to get angles on stuff. He has a little bit more finesse drop stuff. Um, you know, the palace guard is troops really catch people off guard. He's going to get, I mean, I don't know that you can cover all your angles versus this list, regardless of all the shooting. Whereas Jason's list looks like it's going to be able to punch people harder in the teeth, but it's not going to get nearly as many angles. And in my experience, the more angles possible, 
the better off you are. So for me, I, I would rather have Corey's list. Um, so that's the way I'm going. You know, I think this is one matchup we've seen where I think who goes first is going to be really important in this game. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, I think if Corey gets to go for us first, he's going to be able to set those angles up. And then there's a lot of units that Jason has that Corey could just pick up on that first turn. Um, you know, unless he can get those kind of good blade stalkers into a nice bit of terrain, that's 10, 12 defense three with 130 points, right? You know, um, storm, the, uh, the troop of Stormwind cavalry, 145 points, 11, 13. I mean, granted defense five, but uh, you know, I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Corey. And then if he gets the, I think the first turn is really going to matter in this one. I think. Agreed. All right, so we're all weighed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's jump over to table 14. We have – this is actually going to be a fun matchup. Uh, Jason Westerholt versus Mike Austin. We've got a Midwest-Mid-Atlantic matchup. All right, so uh, I've got Jason Westerholt. He's running undead. <coughs> uh, he's two troops of ghouls, a regiment of revenants, Regiment of Race, those were all naked. Uh, Legion of Zombies with Sharpness, love that unit. Uh, mm-hmm. Horde of Werewolves naked. A Horde of Whites naked. A Regiment of Soul Reavers with Caterpillar. Uh, Regiment of Revenants naked. Uh, Revenant King on a Worm that flies with Quicksilver Rapier. Uh, Lich King with Bane Chant that's mounted with Heal 6 and Banner of the Griffin. And a necromancer with bane chant and inspiring talisman. Hmm. Uh, I think blade of slashing is much better on the revenant king than quicksilver rapier. Yeah, it's yeah. useful all the time. Yeah. yeah, and and the brew of sharpness on the zombies, I'd rather see on the whites. Um, oh yeah, that's just, that's just me. It's still a good unit. It's yeah, oh, dude, uh, zombies with that that yeah, sharpness. Uh, oh, fuck shit up, man. That's no, bad. Can't, can't underestimate that. But the whites without it, I feel like, are very meh. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with whites though is people see them on the uh on the table and they go, I gotta deal with that shit, whether they have the brew or not. Right. Um but I agree with you, it would be better to have the brew of sharpness. The zombies with the sharpness are better it's situational. They're better against spirit walkers and things like that. Right. They're not gonna be that yeah, great against never fuck Yeah. yeah. But because I'm really I'm more scared of the zombies with the brew of sharpness. No, I'm not gonna say that. No, I'm 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 equally scared. It's just that the whites, I'm equally scared. The whites are, I think, almost 50 points more expensive right? with the sharpness, right? So it's, uh, it's, true. it's give and take. All right. And then uh, we got Mike Austin, uh, one Mike. of the top players over there in the Mid-Atlantic for sure. Lots he's, of elves. He's got, you know, yeah, I know. It's, the that's the theme. Elves. elves, bro. Um, <laughs> that's right. All right, so Mike's got the uh, same thing he's bringing last year with the elves, but changing it up at least 50% here, it looks like. Uh, he's so he's got bringing a... the same thing, but it's 50% different. <laughs> Points-wise. <laughs> for the five, his heroes are different. How about that? His heroes are different. Uh, kindred archers, still got his 40 archers with heart-seeking chant. He's got four shambler regiment. and. Uh, Two Dracon hordes like you do. One with Caterpillar again. He's got a horde of chariots twice, capitalizing on those new buffs. Dig it. Two breath weapons, just like last year. We got an army standard bear with diadem and dragon kind because need more shooting. Um, Elven mage. He's got uh, that guy mounted. He's got Bane Chant 2 and Black Iron Crown. I can't imagine what he's going to do with that. And then a noble <laughs> on a war chariot twice. Uh, and then a master hunter with inspiring. I really like that guy. Very clutch little character if you know how to play him. Uh, and a Dracon Rider Lord. No dragon this year. Well, he didn't have a dragon last year, I guess. He had the lady. Because he's fifty percent different, right? So, yeah. uh, dude, this list is points wise, it's like seventy five percent the same list. <laughs> like that's a big jump from fifty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I read through it more and I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, okay, so as you actually read it, yeah. you figured out you were full of shit. Cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Mike <laughs> on this one. 
Oh yeah. Um, Mike's has so much shooting, so much speed, um, and the undead are slow. The Wraith Regiment is going to struggle to do what it needs to because it's not going to shut down enough shooting. Um, I think this undead list would be really good if it had uh, Flying Barrow to help. Two troops of Wraiths mm -hmm. I like much better. Um, the Revenant Regiment, I don't... I know it probably was points left over. I dig the two troops of ghouls. I don't think it's a bad undead list, but Mike plays against undead all the time. Um, and this particular elf list is something I really struggle with. And I have about three more things than Jason does to deal with shooting. Um, and Mike's not going to give him the openings. And the problem is the whites aren't going to kill things on their first charge because they don't, they're not hitting on threes. Zombies aren't because they don't have high enough crushing. Um, Soul Reavers are the main threat Mike has to worry about, and I don't think he's going to let them do what they need to do. Yeah, you know, I mean, here in Masters, these are all good players, right? And I think a lot of these matches are going to come down to just, like, uh, close, or maybe you take a couple things in a list that don't quite make sense. And in, in looking at this undead list, like Jake was saying, I love the two troop of ghouls, um, I play a Legion of Zombies with Brew of Sharpness, and the only time I would not do that was if I had a Horde of Whites. Um, but you look at the Werewolves and you look at the Soul Reavers, it's just this Regiment of Revenant Cab. We saw it earlier, and it just would be so much better to have two troops of Revenant Cab to help support the Soul Reavers and the Werewolves. Right. Um, the werewolves running Werewolves with Brew of Strength, right? Yeah. It's a lot running. of investment in every unit, pretty yeah. much, you know. Running Werewolves and Soul Reaver Cab without any support is they're going to hit like a truck but you know when you're playing against all these top caliber players who are using chaff th those units are just are susceptible to being um uh, especially the soul reavers i think either shot off the board without uh, uh, some cover units or um you know and i think you're right the quicksilver rapier on the revenant king on undead worm seems a little odd and then also too i'm just not a fan of banner of the griffin on the lich king i love banner of the griffin it's a great item i just think you could give the lich a more um yeah give him plus three very heal true. Right. Very just, true. How, how do you not give a lich king shroud if you're taking heal well, six it's especially hard. with this style of list if you have a yeah. lot of things you want to boost the nerve but re reasonably you're boosting the nerve probably of the zombies and the revenants and everything mm -hmm. else is should, should be moving and, around and let's yeah, do those, I think those that revenants are going to be nothing but yeah. support the entire time that's right. why he's going the support route with the right. griffin and heal those, and those revenants and ghouls are like gone turn one gone. like just so gone, gone. sky me yeah. immediately <laughs> like ghouls, it depends I mean, on where the revenant cab end up right he, he can keep yeah. the ghouls alive if he uses them right um, yeah, puts them behind I'm, everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, what, yeah, what, he puts what, them behind everything for the entire. Game. Put them on the backboard edge; you'll never get to it. So. What if you walk them behind your units? Yeah. That's why I do now. Why? Oh no, I know, I got you. He but. has height three chariots, bro. It's a bad. See, the thing with the <laughs> thing, all he has to do is two wounds to a troop, and it comes off. Right. And the thing with the zombie legion, you see, you see, oh, dash twenty eight, and yes, that's a lot. But we're talking defense three against chip shooting, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you right. you get a yeah, lot of. Yeah, might want to delete it in one turn. Yeah, you get a lot of fours rerolling ones with defense three. You, it's not that uncommon to lose a zombie legion uh, in one turn against this yep. type of shooting. I yeah. think the undead list would have done really well if it could have taken the the veil of shadows to give itself some stealth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, but yep, it's a tough matchup for Jason. I don't think he has a bad undead list. There's a couple of choices which aren't my style, but maybe I'm, I'm sure he's got a plan going in, but I think Mike is ready for what the undead bring. And I don't, the kindred archers are so good when they have piercing too. They just peel stuff off. So I've, I've got Jake and Jeremy down for Mike. Is and me. Else? Oh, and, and, and me. And yeah. Jeff, right? I, yeah. I, I'll go I'll, Mike too. And right. I'll Rashad, say Mike, said... I'll say Mike too. Because of the horde of kindred archers and also because of the dragon riders, Jason doesn't have anything to deal with the flying stuff, except for the for the for the whites and the revenant king, and then on top of it he has right. The surge is great, but then he has the dragon rider. Soul rider Lord Cav is basically what he's hoping to make. But I mean, they're not long enough range. So. Right. Yeah, they're not long enough range. It's it's difficult. This undead list has a lot of bodies, and it has one more drop than the average undead list. I would say it's got thirteen drops, which is cool. He did, for that he didn't take the magic item on the werewolves. 
mm-hmm. for for the whites. You know, this like for example, uh, it, I like the brew of sharpness on the zombies because it gives the whites that you have to yeah. deal with either one, right? So, so that's good. But overall, I, I think Mike's gonna win this just because of the range, shooting. the shooting. Yeah, dude, those Wester holds are crafty. Never underestimate. Uh, two dragon rider hordes. That's Not so good. Saying. <laughs> just don't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, table fifteen. We've got Mike McKee versus our Canadian friend Dan Miner. You mean Chris yeah. McKee? Chris McKee. Did I say what did I say? Said Mike. Said Mike. Said Mike. Oh, because I've got Mike Austin right above him. Okay. Well, Chris, you can be Mike for the weekend if you want to. Uh, <laughs> or you can be Chris. It's up to you, really. No one. Or your parents, I guess. Uh, Chris McGee versus Dan Miner, West Coast Pacific Northwest matchup. And I've got Chris's list here. He is playing Kingdoms of Men. Woot woot. That's awesome. What up? Um, he's got two boards of heavy pipe blocks. Hello, Morgan. One with the brew of strength, which is awesome. <laughs> Motherfucker, put yourself on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's got a horde of the handgunners with the Jar of the Four Winds. Two regiments of knights, one with the potion and the caterpillar. Two troops of mounted sergeants. Two siege artillery. Two generals on winged beasts. One hero with the wings of honey maze. Um, and it looks like two wizards... Both with Bane Chant and Fireball replaced for the Lightning. One has the Inspiring Talisman. Who has Dan's list? Okay, I have Dan. The Dan. Dan, Dan uh, is uh, working for a West, and he's playing a Ratkin. So he has three regiments of Tunnel Slaves, two hordes of Shock Troops, uh, one with Roof sharp, Sharpness, Nasty. Another one with Caterpillar. He's got a horde of Blight with Brew of Strength. Got a horde of Brutes. Two weapon teams with the extra piercing. A mutant rat fiend. Two death engines. Um, an enforcer mounted on a flea bag. And the death engines have vile sorcery. Shocker. Shocker, I know. Um, enforcer mounted on a flea bag. Uh, we have two warlocks. Both with Bane Chant and then the Lightning Bolt that they come with, and one has Inspiring Talisman. And we got a Swarm Crier. Uh, so Dan only has one. Okay, two Inspiring in this list. Correct. But he's playing Compact, if you look no, at I, it. No, I know, but. There's only a couple of things that he cares enough about to really keep him inspired, right? Yeah. Hmm. I, yeah, I'll go first. Oh, sorry, you want to go, Jake? Go, 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 man. You got it. I think if Dan can shoot off those pike blocks, if he's not careful with how he uh, manages those pike blocks, the the one the one with brute strength is 300 points. Mm-hmm. You know, defense four. I mean, those things are amazing in combat. They're good, but. If he doesn't, and I guess he could, he's got the mounted sergeants. You know, he doesn't have. He's got two flying heroes on monsters too, by the way. Yeah, so that is good. So that is, and you know, flying character. So he does have the tools, like you said, to deal to, to protect those units. Um, I think since I haven't done it yet, uh, Dan's on my team, so uh, <laughs> he's gonna smoke. Ace twenty o. I called it here. <laughs> Drop the ball. Uh, well, I don't know how my. It's it's a pity actually because these guys are both from my region. They they're gonna play each other round one. But <laughs> tough for them. <laughs> they actually don't play each other very much. It should be good. Um, I've never played Dan's Ratkin. I've played against Chris quite a bit actually. Um, and he has fine-tuned his list exactly what he wants he knows he knows how to use it um i'm gonna go with chris uh those pike blocks are just stupid nasty and i think he has the tools to protect it and i think he knows how to prioritize targets Mm -hmm. i think uh the the death engines are the probably the biggest threat to the uh pike blocks with their shooting and i think he's gonna go right for those with his uh, with his rifleman and his and his uh, siege engines, and they're only defense four. 
those will melt to those rifles. So I'm going to go with Chris. For many of the same reasons you just said, Ryan, um, I like the heavy pike blocks a lot. And I think if Dan can't peel them off with shooting, he, he's going to have a hard time moving them because um, all of his stuff is hitting on fours pretty much, which means it's hitting on fives, which is just so tough to get through anything. And then the knight regiments are sort of this like little sit them in the back. They're like a tool that he can fall back on. You know, they, they're a really good counter punch unit. The generals on the wing beast, while I'm not a huge fan of them. I think in oh, this they're style, great. I think in this style, yeah, they're, awesome. they can be, they're, they're amazing for 190 they're points. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. For their points are so great. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll, they, they work well with what he, what he, um, Chris is bringing. And then two Bane chance to block up his line. Um, and really yeah. make those knights and that grinding work really well. I think the the rats are going to have some trouble if their stuff can't shoot things off, and I think the nerve on the king's men's too high to do it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I echo a lot of that. Chris is, I think Chris has this one pretty good. Archibusayers with, you know, jar of four wins, just point and click your way to victory yeah. with those guys. <laughs> um and you come, you want to come at them? Cool. Watch, watch what these generals on large beasts are gonna do. They're just gonna eat your damn lunch, and the knights are gonna come finish you off. It's, it's not something. I mean, he's just got so much reach that uh, even if Dan starts getting within it, he can lock him down, throw chaff at him all day long. Um, I think those archibusayers are gonna be putting down some serious punishment, and then once. Uh, combat starts heavy heavy pikes are going to be really difficult to deal with i just don't know that dan is going to have the stay power to take any any multi charges so hopefully he's able to hold it back to single charges on some of that so especially with he's you got to remember if dan's playing compact that lets chris play everywhere else right so how many units you're going to be able to get into that frontage, you know? Yep. So it's a it's a little bit of an unfortunate matchup for uh, Dan in the sense that his uh, tunnel slaves will will die so quickly to those arcusiers and, and the rest of the shooting that Chris has. Uh, so I would just to keep it short, I agree with the. Yeah, I agree with the arc. The, the archivisiers are so good with the draw of the four wins, thirty-six inch range, just sitting back and shooting as long as you want. It's it's pretty good, and the knights. I, I think I think Chris Chris has got this. I believe in you, Dan. I I think so too. I think Dan can pull it off. I think there one are other person things. does believe in you, Dan. I too. I think so too. Uh, I would I would put different things in Dan's list, but. <laughs> but i know i know i know that list can, can can do work so we'll see it depends uh, obviously it depends on how dan plays it but uh let's jump into table 16 it'll be the final table for the evening we have mike rossi Woo! out of the northeast uh, versus tim smith out of the southeast also woohoo uh fun fun table Let's, All right, uh, I'm, let's hear it. I'm reading Mike. Um, Mike's running dwarves, and he has a horde of ironclad with a hammer of measured force. He has one, two, yeah, that's two regiments of iron guard. They both exchanged uh, shields for 200 weapons, so they uh, go to defense five, but I'm sorry, they lower the defense five, but they gain crushing one. One has the mace of crushing, the other one has the blade of slashing. And he has a regiment of rangers, a horde of earth elementals with healing brew, berserker brock riders with caterpillar, one organ gun, two army standard bears, one with a loot and the other one with a diadem of dragon kind. He has a king with the wings of honey mace, a stone priest with drain life six and banner of the griffin, two battle drillers, one greater earth elemental and one steel behemoth. Which I'm going to cool guess is a steam tank. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir. We had to vote on that earlier. <laughs> my rocks are steam tanks. My steam tanks are steam tank. My steam tanks, steam tanks are steam tanks. <laughs> They're all painted with Walmart acrylics. <laughs> <laughs> you take that back. 
and, and then you, you and, can't and a water a water uh, a children's uh, water brush watercolor brush <laughs> from Mike's, their paint book. <laughs> Mike's on the podcast with Jake a lot, right? With Jake and Greg. Yeah, yeah. He's on my, yeah. yeah he's on my I'm just, he knows I'm just fucking with him. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't beat him, right? Because then he'll like he'll karate chop you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He hasn't sprained one of his mini old man bones. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to break such compact bones, though. Man. Mike, t- Mike that dude. Feel- that dude spends more time injured not being able to practice his karate <laughs> <laughs> than he does karate. actually practicing. Karate, karate. All right. Who's got Who's got Tim Smith's list? My My pretty pretty princess sash boy. Which he better bring that pretty princess sash that I made him wear. He's fucking watching right now. <laughs> better so, uh... Better be wearing it, Tim. I have Tim's list. Uh, he's doing undead. He has four regiments of race. One with healing brew. Uh, horde of werewolves with strength. Regiment of soul reavers with caterpillar. Regiment of Revenant Cav with haste, a vampire lord that's mounted with boots of the seven leagues, a lich king with bane chant, lightning bolt mounted with scarlet maw's Fenulian amulet, and then a necromancer with lightning bolt mounted with boots of levitation. Ooh. I really like this list. I think it's really good. Dude, those boots and surge, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that vampire lord with. The seven leagues is amazing too. That's good too. Yeah, I'm gonna be up in your face. Yeah. Can that vampire lord move eighteen in the first round, or does he only move twelve? Eighteen, he can yeah, move eighteen. Can 18. Wow, yeah. that's pretty dope. That is. I hope there's not any fucking terrain around there where you can dive into. Right, right. Tim does these just crazy combo things that most people don't do and he catches people out with them and i think that that's one of his biggest um you know biggest surprises he gets on most people is that he just has these gotcha units that people don't see hey jeff you've been Uh, harping on the southeast all uh all night for shots how many shots are in this list that's right because he's a real fucking man Eight, Tim's my pretty shots. princess. <laughs> Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, he doesn't have an easy matchup, I would say. Mike Rossi knows what he's doing. He does have a freaking shit ton of defense six, which is not, I mean, defense five and six. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, Berserker Rocks, they're going to be pretty solid on this too, obviously, if he can get him in a lockdown. But here's the thing. Tim's got one, two, three, four regiments of wraiths, and that is not easy to get through. So no, when he's able to sit there and lock shit down and then do whatever the hell he wants with werewolves, soul reaver cav, and a vampire lord that's going to already be on your dick on turn one, like, it's pretty rough, man. I so, do think um, Rossi does have... So uh, he's got, basically, he wants to get in combat, so I don't mm-hmm. think he is as worried about the, the vampire. The vampire is going to be annoying, but it's not going to be the same as like some of the elf lists we've seen where that vampire can just shut down what they want to do. Sure. Um, well, I was just saying like, if you have to worry about, oh yeah, you have to worry about that vampire, like just saying, Oh, I'm going to go pick up this battle driller. la di da, go pick up this one. Mm-hmm. You know, like if he can just hit stuff in the face, let it, let, let himself get countercharged and then run away with him. Like, woo! I mean, like, it's just really annoying because you have to do something right. about him. And I don't think Mike has anything to do about him. I mean, well, he's, he's got to make the much, wall, right? He's, he's pretty much stunty yeah, iron yeah, wall. That vampire think, is probably just going to do whatever the fuck he wants all game long, really. I think, though, the wraiths, the wraith regiments are going to, they're going to lock some of Mike's stuff down. But they're not going to kill anything. No, yeah, it's yeah, be a yeah. Slap they're not going to both it. ways. Yeah, yeah they're no going to hit each other for that. four turns, Tim's, doing nothing. Tim's list really only has the soul reavers that are a big threat to Mike's list because the werewolves with brutal strength, they're going to be able to in some way. But, but yeah, look, look at look at the stuff that's going to run around the corners right. in Tim's list. So it's the true. race do all that lockdown, and, and then everything else runs around the corners. Calves come and they just roll those flanks. Does have that ability to pivot and turn and burn a little bit, that's right? True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, you've got the battle drillers that give some of that flank protecting. I think while 
it looks like Tim does have a pretty nasty list. I think Rossi, I don't think he cares as much about some of the stuff Tim is. No. Um, I don't like think this is a race. smash face in either which way. I, I I'm just I saying. I don't think it's. I don't think it's nasty either way. Well, I, gotta, I, I just gotta think talk about my boy Jeff. You know, got a <laughs> got a rep. <laughs> yeah, the hammer measure force is gonna be dope as shit though. Right? Those ironclad. So I'm gonna tell you that. Yeah, like when so I first saw the... that, I was like, hmm, I don't know. But against him, this is like the best possible. Oh yeah, yeah. this is those race are like fuck yeah. that. Tim's <laughs> like, all right, my race have got that. Oh shit, never mind. Nope. Yeah. Hard pass. Yeah. Yeah. Ironbird regiments are pretty nasty with crushing one. And I think Mike's bringing like at least what sixteen tanks in here. So. <laughs> well, and the thing is. is <laughs> Mike think models. Sorry, that, models. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike is using a list that he he's he no. wants to play rather than what he thinks is like the internet telling him what's good. No, and yeah, that's why I like Mike. Shit, dude. Yeah, I sure. think that's going to work and, really well to him. Like, he's going to do what I, yeah. I, 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 I got, I'm going to go with Mike. I got to go with Mike. I think it's close. And those and, battle uh, drillers. Those battle drillers. So be good. good. The only thing I'd like to see different in Mike's list: is the stone priest swapping drain life for prayer of the martyr. Oh, fuck that. Mm. Fuck that. Fuck that. There's a martyr with the steel behemoths and the um the greater earth elementals yep. and all that high defense would be Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But he's still he's still gonna be doing damage yep. into combat. So you get to poke into combat and still get the bonus of healing. So Not I could see why it, you would go that way. Yeah. So Yeah. Um I Gosh, man, this is really rough. But if it was me, I think I'm going to go Tim on this one. But this is going to be one of the closest matches, honestly. I really don't think this is a landslide either which way. Um, but I just think Tim is going to have a easier time picking what he cares to do to Mike. And Mike's just going to have to let it happen, you know? So. Just let it happen. I well, think- I mean, yeah. He just has to play defensive, and whatever Tim wants, Tim's going to take. So this is one. This is one of the matchups that you know. After I'm uh, thoroughly crushed in my game, this is going to be the one I'm going to go watch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. Both, both <laughs> these army is such a fun guy to play against, and Tim yeah. seems like an awesome guy too. Tim's so this great. Is gonna yeah, like, this is going to be like one of the best first games. And both these armies are really creative. They're very flavorful. They both mm-hmm. tell a story when you're looking at them. Like I can imagine these forces as being like uh, real armies. I mean, if I was to critique it, I think I like uh, on Tim's list, uh, do what he did with his casters, but instead of lightning bolt, put heal. So take away the amulet, give shroud and heal to the lich. Yeah, be a fully, real man. Fully, take fully, no fully shooting, that. Tim. I mean, that's fully. just my own. That's my only. That's my. I think with this type of list, his list wants to be in combat. So I just think heal with all that defense six wraiths. I just think that. that I think you're, he would uh, just get. A little... I, I don't know. I like the lightning bolts. The total lightning bolt of ten lets Tim take off chaff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is we're, we're just like I said, it's, it's like a that's small, pretty big. It's, it's a small critique, and it would just be something you know, yeah. like a a a, a player Personal preference. Point. Yeah. yeah. But I like uh, Ross's list. Uh, I like Mike's list. Uh, Rossi, man, he's not. Rossi he's not is what friend. I meant to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> pivot, pivot. <laughs> um, like battle drillers are so good. We all know ooh, uh, uh, how good they are. <laughs> like that he has a little bit of everything. I mean, the Iron Guard with the crushing one. That's kind of like what we want, like the great weapon guys to be like, right? Like it's. Uh, the hammers or whatever. I like having that crushing one with defense five. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty close, and I'm not sure who's going to win, but that's this is who I'm going to go over and watch. So, so you're picking nobody? I'm going to say it's going <laughs> to be... A, Everyone wins. Yeah. Everyone in the room wins because they get to watch this game happen. I really think the, crea- <laughs> the creative... Table flair... one. Put it on table one. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. table 16, so it's in the middle of the room. Just mm-hmm. walk to the middle. I don't know. There's no shooting spam in either of these lists, so we all win. Right. Yes. <laughs> also that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tim has 10 drops in his undead list, which is very low, uh, but it's it's 10 really good drops. I do agree with Jeremy on the 
lich kings they would be much better with heal maybe uh and then also there's there's so many points is what jeff was saying earlier about somebody else's list you put bane chant on him it's 20 points lightning bolts 35 points you can you only get to cast one spell a turn finuli nam in it you want to surge with them but you also yeah. want to do lightning bolt it's kind of it's kind of eh. and then you have bane but, chant on top of it yeah it's just it's right so, so you're paying for like, three phases right so you, you've got yeah, your first yeah. two phases you lightning your second two phases mm -hmm. you surge and then your last two phases you bane chant that's you're right it's a lot it's a, it's a lot. It's just it, it would be more points effective if you had it on necromancers. The necromancer with the levitation yeah. is really good. That is uh, really good. The, the, the drop, the, especially with four regiments of rates, because there's going to be so many uh, search and options. So it's good. Mike's list is very uh, versatile. He's got so many different things in it. Well, he could take you, a charge, right? Like he could take a punch. He can take oh, a charge, yeah. and and yeah. you guys are all right. He, this is such a 50-50 match; it's so close. It, it it would be really hard to tell who's going to win it. I'm going to give it to Mike because he has more drops, uh, even though he doesn't have the movement to actually counter the rates. But uh, I just want to see him win in this one, even though I like I like Tim's list. It's just not enough drops. Ten drops is uh, it's very low. Not that it's going to make a difference against dwarves. <laughs> Doesn't matter right. what he's saying. But. Yeah. No, no, he's going to outmove the. Oh wait, no, never mind. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to roll with Tim. Go with Tim. Uh, All right. I feel like he can pick the engagements. Uh, because he's so much, you know, he's going to lock things down with his race, and then he's going to roll on the flanks. He's, you know, he can pick what he's going to take out, and there's not much Mike can do to stop it, as long as Tim plays it smart and doesn't. Just make a bad. If he makes a bad choice and charges anyone he shouldn't, then it'll probably cost him the game. Because he only has ten drops, so you can't make a mistake. He's gonna have to play a great, he, a, almost a perfect game. But if he does that, I think he'll pull out the win. I don't know him, so I don't know how good of a player he is. But chances are he's good because he's, he's in the Masters. So I'm gonna roll. Yeah, he's, a he's always a both, top five. They're both very he's good players. Yeah, I'm they're both ten players. It's a good choice. Back to that lightning bolt real quick. It's not going to take out anything. Yeah. Well, in general, I'm not talking about this list. It's specific. Yeah, but I'm you're talking about in general. Yeah, and you're not trying to take stuff out, right? Like at that point, you're just trying to against the dwarf list. You're just trying to yeah. put a couple of wounds there, a couple of wounds here, so that when you finally get there and commit, closer. you can pop it. Yeah. It's so, a nice thing to have in, a, in an undead list. It's just not that effective against a dwarf player, I guess, because every new defense player. Yeah. We, we've got five people on the cast that are picking rounds, and we have an exact tie <laughs> with this round, which is not mathematically possible. Uh, so does that mean I have to pick someone, basically, is what you're saying? I, I'm saying you probably <laughs> should nut up, and, yeah, <laughs> nut up and pick. Okay, I will pick. It's gonna flip the fucking coin. I swear to God. Um, <laughs> I guess I gotta go cam. with. I'm gonna go with Rossi. I gotta go. <laughs> gonna go with him. Unplug radio. <laughs> yeah, I have to say. Shout out to you you guys, guys are is the closest one, and it's nice that the last one is the closest one too. That's so. That's so nice. Yeah, uh, so th that was 16. We're uh, officially done for the evening. We're only over by three minutes, which is pretty goddamn good. Check us the fuck out. Look at that. With Jeff Swan on a fucking podcast, we end on time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. My, my train has no rails. <laughs> <laughs> no, no stops, no end. Uh, so, guys, uh, on the next one, I know some of us can't make both. Um, for those of you who can't make next uh next next cast wherever that is sunday uh what are lists that stood out as your favorites and then what are lists that you think have the best chance of winning and i know that's really kind of spur of the moment concept so we're only probably talking about the first 16 unless you've looked at everything which shame on you cheaters uh <laughs> what do you all think for people who aren't going to be here on sunday because we're going to uh, ask the same question then too I won't be here Sunday. Um, as for lists that I like, um, I like Tim's list. Uh, the one we just went over, I think it's really cool. Um, 
I would run a dead. I'd want, you know want to do something similar. It's just it's different than any on dead list I've seen. I like to do things that are not commonly done. Uh, the list I think will win. Gosh, I don't remember whose it was, but there was that elf list with all the chariots and the archer horde. The Robert. There might have been one of them. One of those. Or Sean I mean, Williams. I mean, there's so many. Just Sean, say a thousand Sean list. list had, uh, right, I know. League. Uh, if he's talking elves, then it was. Oh yeah, yeah, Robert. elves. Yeah, it's Robert. Just elves. Yeah, I think I think it was Roberts. I think that one probably has the best chance in the list that I've seen. I don't disagree just, with you. It's, it's a good so hard to deal with. I agree with you as well. That is an amazing list. I'm 50-50 on if I'm going to make it on Sunday right now still. So uh, I will point out the probably most obvious one uh, being Aaron Chapman. Um, that list just has something for everybody in the room, and he probably doesn't really give two shits about any of his matchups. It's just going to be the game he plays and what scenarios it's going to be. That I mean, yeah, it's a it's a hard list, man. It's rough. I guess I'll go next. I might I might be available for Sunday because my car it decided to explode. So uh, <laughs> that thing's my, a piece of shit, dude. My original plans of <laughs> um, don't off. ever buy a Mercedes during the years that they were owned by Chrysler because you have a Just Chrysler Mercedes made Mercedes. Mercedes. Stopped at Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> So lists that are nasty, I think that you guys have picked them. I think Sean Williams and Aaron Chapman's were the two uh, uh, pretty filthy lists. I think one that I actually really liked, I like Nathan's Empire of Dust list with those all, all those mummies. Um, God, he's got so much work with those guys, too. He knows exactly what know, he's doing. I, just, I, I really like the flavor of that list. I think uh, someone who, who plays a lot with the idol, that's so nasty. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious to see how he plays that list, but that was one that stood out to me. Like you think about if I played empire of dust, I would love to play that army. So to me, that's a good sign of like, you see a list and you're like, Oh, that's really cool. I want to make that army. And his, his was one that jumped out to me. I'll be on Sunday. So I'm not giving opinions. <laughs> good. Same here. No, maybes for me. I'll be there. That's right. Yeah, mine's, mine's a coin flip. Plan short just to be here on the cast. <laughs> that makes my I... dick so soft. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be on Sunday's podcast, but I'm I'm still looking at Robert Brandon's elves list, and it makes my dick hard. It's such a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's such a good list. This, Until you get this, matched up with him, and then you oh my god, I, I would get the cheese. I, I would oh, so much cheese, <laughs> so much cheese. <laughs> but you know what? It's cheese. At the same time, he only has twelve drops, but he has eighteen unit strength in this shit. Um, <laughs> with with right. the kindred archers, and then dragon dragon riders with sharpness and caterpillar. Three <coughs> more chariot boards. I mean, it, this is so much. This is so much in it. It's really good, and the black iron crown, mm -hmm. and the war chariots. And two dragon rider lords. It's so Pretty versatile. He likes everything. He's just listening. I love. <laughs> He's just reading it off again. <laughs> I'm reading it off again. I love that. List. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I love that list. Good list. Next year, Rashad will be playing elves, and it'll be that list. <laughs> <laughs> it's just him like, going to the grocery <laughs> store. Oh, I'll have this. And I need some chariots. Oh, I these. like chariots. I'll take all of these. No, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I had a little bit of. I had Corbel, I had the champagne, and now I'm drinking Moscato. It couldn't be any more girly. I think that's why I like the health list. Uh, <laughs> that's the only reason why I like the health list tonight, I think. No, it's a good list. Aaron Chapman's list is fantastic, too. It's going to be difficult to deal with. It's one of those lists that, what does it fear? It fears that goblin list with 100 shots, but other than that, it doesn't fear anything. It's a change. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a grind. It's I can tell you, I've, I've played it. It is. It is not an easy fight. Yeah. All righty. Uh, so, I mean, we've we've run through favorites and infamous. Uh, anybody final final parting thoughts, and then we'll close it out. And we'll meet up again in three or four days. And, and we'll I'm excited. Get to Let's get pumped. This is going to be killer. Let's get Great. Crunk. Yeah, bringing some board games and shit for Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Yep, for people for people who are staying around on Sunday, 
Mm-hmm. That's the people who know what they're doing. Staying uh staying around yeah. long enough. Curse so. curse of Dracula, Jake. Oh, uh, that I don't own it. Greg's the uh, one who owns it. Bro. Oh, so who uh didn't he buy the Barnes and hey, Noble? Jake. He's yeah. gotta bring it. I have all of the red dragon in characters. <laughs> He does. Created a monster. All <laughs> of them. Oh, good. I'm trying, so I'll be bringing a ton of board games. Sweet. All right. Okay. Let's uh let's close it out here, guys. I'm gonna knock us down, and then we'll uh, recap again on Sunday. See you guys soon. Good luck. Later. See you.